you were at the beach? Yeah, we took the dogs to the beach. Oh, that's fucking nice. Yeah, so there's this one nice beach. It's like a pretty pretty quiet because it's like at the end of this peninsula. It's a pretty far drive. There's a lot of beaches on it. Yeah. So we go to the one that's at the very end. It's called Bathtub Beach. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we just bring all the dogs and we went with uh, Julie and Sabrina. They're here too. So they have two dogs. We all five dogs. We just let them off the leash or run around the, the beach. It's nice. How much better is it having your dogs there now, man? Oh, it's nice. Yeah. Does it feel more sure. like, is it feeling more like home now? Yeah. I mean, it's, we're in a condo apartment on the second floor right now. So having dogs up there is kind of a pain in the ass. We don't like yeah. have a yard and stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I mean, just in terms of having them, obviously we miss them. And, you know, even just for like your mental health, having pets is so nice, you know? Like, oh my God. Tell me about it. That's to have around, you know? Um, so now that you got your visa and you're staying there for a little while, are you going to like look for a house or are you good where you're at? No, we'll look for a place. I mean, whether it's a, a long, a rental of like an actual house house, you know, like a place that we want to stay for the next year or two or whatever. Um, or if we're going to sell our house in Canada, we're not hundred percent sure yet, but, um, the market in Canada and especially in Ottawa right now, I mean, all of Canada is, is crazy right now. So it's obviously an advantageous time to sell, but you know, we're not hundred percent supposed sure. to, it's supposed to go up like another 15%. I heard. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why we had thought about doing like a one year and I, I have someone, a friend of mine that would be looking to rent the place so I yeah. can do it like all off the books kind of thing, which would be a little better. Yeah. Um, and, you know, sit on the house for another year. And then by then we'll hundred percent know what we want to do permanently or not permanently yeah. or whatever. Um, and we'll kind of decide from there, but at least for now, we'll, we'll probably just rent here at least for the next year. And then if we want to buy, it'll be after that. I have friends who talk about buying houses and like Paul was talking about buying a house in Florida Are houses cheap there. Uh, no, I mean, they're not cheap. They're not like Texas cheap. I mean, like you're not getting, you know, 4,500 square foot houses for 650 K. Like that's obviously not a thing. Like, but your, like ha- your house in Ottawa, what would it cost in Florida? Approximately, you had to guess, like where you're at right now. 750 US. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, that's, that's but, a good I mean, amount of money. Right now, that house in Ottawa is selling for $900,000. Oh, is so it really? Like, yeah. Man, I bought yeah. that house in 2019 spring for 434 and it's they're selling for like 910, 920. And we have a $60,000 kitchen I just put in too. Yeah. I don't know so if I'm right or not, but I think Hassan posted a graph, like a, a video graph, like moving yeah. over time. time saw like, yeah. You saw that, right? Yeah. yeah the yeah. Canadian market was like higher than all other countries yeah like yeah. it was nuts he's down here too in florida yeah, yeah. like living there him and alex Audi both have come down here yet yeah. really yeah hassan's in orlando um they've been kind of hopping around orlando for a bit because i mean they got young kids right so for them yeah. to be in orlando with this disney and universe all that shit is is nice um and alex came down first the other body of alex Audi. yeah uh, he came down he was in clearwater so like outside of tampa yeah. I think they thought it was a little boring there. So him and Hassan are good buddies. So I think he's probably going to be going down there. So when did they get there? Are they living there or are they just visiting? I, th- I think they sold their houses in Canada. So I don't know if they're permanently residing here, but at least like, you know, we're done with Ottawa for a bit in Canada and how Canada's going. So we know we want to be in Florida for now. Let's just rent for a while and, and feel things out. Everybody, and my buddy, like I said, Julian, Julian's down here too from Quebec too. Everybody wants to leave Canada, eh? Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. Yo. It's- it's going crazy down here, man. Fucking things are getting, actually things are starting to open up in some places. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the convoy is going to start to have some effect on it all. I mean, like, I don't you know. know. I, I know Alberta, Alberta dropped their mandates and stuff and yeah. uh, Saskatchewan did, I believe Quebec did. I think Ontario is supposed to reduce theirs in March. Yeah. March then, 1st is supposed to be some reductions. Yeah. Yeah. And then crossing the border. I think you don't need a PCR test anymore. Just a rapid test. Uh only if you're fully vaccinated. If you're vaccinated, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're fully vaccinated. If you're double, if you're not, then you still need to do all the regular stuff. Yeah, fuck. Nick, what's going on? Hi. You look confu- you look confused. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to I had to figure out what you guys were talking about, but I, I caught on. Oh, we we're talking about just the re- Canada. mandates and yeah, shit going on in Canada. Canada mandates and shit. Yeah. What's going on with you, man? Nothing. You want to you want to start your fan back there so we know when you're frozen or not? <laughs> oh, I figured I'd keep it off. <laughs> what uh what's going on what's the big news right now everybody's fucking waiting on pins and needles what's what's nick gonna do nick nick's nick's taking his time um nick's making sure his uh next decisions are gonna be are gonna last a long time so so you don't have any hints for the people what about coaches have you talked to any coaches um no i haven't you haven't. All right. So everything's just up in the air. Nobody gets to know anything. No. 
Okay, you secret. fuckers. Can, you, you I'm fuckers secret. Can, all you fuckers can leave me alone now. I asked him. If he didn't answer, it's not my problem anymore. Oh, was that? Was was there magic? You never addressed people, it. People keep busting my ball. Why don't you ask? Yeah, why Nick the fuck does he ask Nick? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I can't make him talk about it. Um, yeah. All right. Well, so everything's up in the air. We're all just gonna have to guess. Uh, Ian, you want to take some guesses? Yeah, we gonna we want to do like a like coach and company. Let's do coach first. Let's do this for Nick. All right, Ian, who do you think would be the best coach for Nick? Ooh. And then and we'll have to we'll have to weigh the pros and cons as to each. I think <laughs> Hani or AJ Sims. Ooh, AJ Sims is one I haven't heard of. AJ's good. AJ's actually really good for sure. He's doing good with Justin. I think that would be a, a look that kind of would look good on Nick. Yeah. I think. Okay. So what are the pros and cons of Hani before I give my answer? Well, I don't know. You worked with Hani, didn't you? Well, okay. I'll say this. So pros for Hani is I think he's probably arguably the best coach and best coach in the industry. I mean, you um, can definitely make that argument. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, he was so, you know, other than like John, personal life combined with coaching john was the best but as far as strictly bodybuilding coaching i feel like hani got the most out of me um but i also know that hani really only works with people that are sponsored by his company so unless nick goes with evagen and hani then that's not, not go. going it's not double gonna whammy double whammy yeah. right yeah. there but sometimes you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket yeah that's true all right yeah i did that already yeah he did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah that's true so that's but a negative oh yeah that's fine. if honey if honey is able to honey was coaching it. phil phil was never with evagen i know but it seems like something he started doing more recently like he really yeah. only because i don't think honey has time to coach so many people so i think he really puts his emphasis into the people that are on his team yeah so i, I mean, think it isn't, isn't just like any people though you know so so that's what i was going to say i think he would take on nick because nick has potential to be another olympia winner for him yeah so that's a i mean if so I guess we could put it this way. If Hani didn't attach Evagen to the deal, Hani would be the best, do you think? I definitely, I mean, I put it as one of the two for sure, I think, yeah. Oh, wait, this is good. We have another coach coming on, so we can ask Ben too. Um, <laughs> Nick's like, what the fuck have I got myself into? We're just going to talk about, <laughs> we're just going to talk about your life for a little while. Nick, are you okay with this? Yeah, have a blast, guys. Well, this is what, this is what fans do. They sit around and gossip about who's going to speculate. Yeah, speculate. Yeah, not gossip, sorry. Ben, what's going on, man? Hey, man, how are you? Good. How are you? Hi, Ben. Uh, just throw him right into it. Ask the question. Ben, who do you think uh, Nick should no, be coaching? He's got to pick. Got to pick both. Oh yeah, you got to pick. Well, no. First of all, we're going to do coaches. So yeah, you can pick one or two coaches that you think would be best to be coached. Best to coach Nick, and you can't include yourself. I'm gonna say Honey. <laughs> that's, that's what we just said. That's what I just said. Okay. <laughs> but I said the negative was that Honey would want him to go to Evagen potentially and Nick doesn't want to put all the eggs in one basket so that might not might not work but I think we all agree if Hani didn't attach the, the company to it oh how he would probably that's be a the dangerous it's a yeah. dangerous combination yeah it is a very dangerous combination and then uh what about number two do you have a second option what are you doing Nick are you calling Hani I thought about <laughs> um I want to say Patrick because I've had such a good experience with him. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not sure if I'm being biased as to whether Nick would gel with him though, you know? Uh, I think I thought about that one because I think Patrick is very like, do this step by step. That's the way it goes. Don't Which ask I any questions. Would be good for Nick in that sense though. Yeah. And I think yeah. Nick is Nick is very like, okay, here's my plan. I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm just going to fucking do it. Yeah. So yeah. I thought that would be, that would be a good one too. My thought was, what about, so obviously Hani, I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you guys on the Hani situation if it's not paired with the company, but what about, I thought about Justin Compton because I feel like Justin is so close to when he was a competitor and still is also very, lives here too. He, lives yeah, right here. he lives there. He's very involved. He has a really good track record and I feel like he could not only coach, but give bodybuilding advice outside of advice. Uh, yeah. yeah outside of just nutrition i didn't even think yeah. of that that's actually a good a good thought yeah well yeah. thought because i because you know he's coaching he's coaching uh roman 
Yeah. He's doing doing a good job putting size on Roman. No, nobody's been able to do that. Roman's no been one. fucking the Literally same not. size. Yeah. So he's doing a good job with Roman and uh, all his guys come in fucking peaked pretty well. Like they're all in good shape. They're all full. They're not like, you know, flat or whatever watery or anything like that. They're all, they're all pretty, they're prepped pretty well. So I thought Justin Compton would be a good one. Cause I'm thinking like, for me, I made the biggest strides in my career when I had a coach that also uh, was involved in my life in some way. So I don't know, Nick, do you need that? You think in a coach you need to, you need a coach that like is not only looking out for your competitive history, but also has like your best, best at heart, like life wise. Um, yeah, to some extent. Yeah. Doesn't that go hand in hand with every good coach though? Yeah. Like, isn't of, that no. exactly? No, I mean, really, to, really, no, some coaches are really like, just coaches. No, yeah. I think, I think, listen, it depends on, on my experience. I'll talk about my experience. That, that, that's wait, wait. That's why I said, isn't that true about really good coaches? Uh, <laughs> not, ju not just, not just a coach, because I feel like to get the best out of your athlete, you have to have that connection and that you need to know them. where you have to know that awareness of what's going on behind the scenes and the stresses and the things yeah. going on. I'm not disagreeing sure. with you at all. I think for sure that's the best combination, but I think there are coaches that got the best out of their athletes without being, I will agree there too. Like, you know, Chad, I don't think Chad's a very like lifestyle coach and he had a lot of top Olympians and obviously Ronnie Coleman, but um, then you also have Chris Aceto, who I don't think is as involved as like, he is you with know, some of his guys, though. I mean, he's pretty tight with some of his guys. I think it I depends how long you're with the coach, too. Like him and right? Sergio and these guys yeah. are like boys, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. He, he was he was pretty close with Luke when Luke was Yeah, Luke, him, him and Luke. And that wasn't that wasn't like a long, like, Sergio guy. All of those guys have been with, like, Dusty. They've been with Chris for, like, a long time. Yeah, maybe, but, you know, maybe. even in the short term, you know? Yeah. Maybe it's just my experience because I was only with Chad for three years. So I was, it was kind of like a coach athlete versus a uh, friendship and then with honey i was only two or three years so same thing and then with john i became friends but we were together for four or five years but i don't know i feel like some coaches off the bat are more interested in what's going on here like milos i feel like milos is more involved in like right away like what goes on with your life uh, and your training and your diet and everything yeah would you agree with that ben because well, you, work, you work with him yeah i was about to say i was about to say i worked with him and i didn't have quite that i became closer with milos when i stopped working with him but I think Milos now is a different coach than he was five years ago or 10 years ago. Cause I haven't, I haven't heard, I haven't heard or seen the same things I'm seeing with Milos now that I did then. Like now, oh, like yeah. you see him oh, with yeah. Regan and you see him with Sam yeah. and you see him like, he's, he's really, really involved. involved in their life. He'll be going to Regan will be at dinner at his house every week. Yeah. And like, yeah. you know, these yeah. guys are like very involved in their lives. I see that. I mean, Regan even moved his ass down there. You know, It's almost like, it's almost, I feel like Milos took a page out of John's book a little bit. Like he's I mean, Milos is another good one. I mean, I could see Milos and Nick working together absolutely too. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Milos or, or uh, Milos, uh, Nick, are we helping you at all? <laughs> <laughs> he's he's throwing throwing names at you. <laughs> uh, I, I've thought of all these options. Well, let me ask you this Do you prefer a coach or an athlete coach, like somebody who did it at the highest level, like somebody like a Justin Compton, or do you prefer? A coach who's just a great fucking coach, uh, like Hani, who did it, but maybe not at the highest level, you know what I mean? Or like Chad, who did it, but not at the highest level or anything like that. Like, does that matter to you? Or do you just look at... No, it, it just comes... To me, it just all comes down to who um, I connect with the best. I mean, yeah. like Hani could be the best coach in the world. Chad could be the best coach in the world. But if I don't feel I connect I'll with them you. at all... It's That's just it's not going to work. That's yeah, the best coach in the world isn't necessarily the best coach for everybody. hundred percent right? agree. So, yeah. but that brings up a really good point. So, and I'll, I'll ask any of you this, what, what is it that, how do you know when somebody's like, how do you know when something clicks? Like how long does it take like Nick or Ian or Ben, if you're talking to a coach, I think, you know, that pretty quick. No, like, how do you know? I feel right like away? when you guys are just kind of on the same page with a lot yeah. of your thoughts, is there something a coach could say to you that would turn you off immediately? Because I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys this. So I had a. I'm not going to have something you can think of. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, when they're into like that funky, weird training shit. <laughs> no, no, no. Marty, no. <laughs> what do you mean by that? What kind of funky, weird training? What are you talking? Hey, the guy you doing those weird exercises and this and nah, I'm out. <laughs> so I was going to say I'm not going to mention a name, but I had a coach who wanted to coach me back in like 13 or 14. Bruh, we need names. <laughs> 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 uh, no, it was a coach who was a prominent coach who said to me, 
<laughs> Would you fuck off? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Keep going, keep going. He said, uh, I could get you to the top 10 at the Olympia, or even, I think he even said top five, but it was something like, it was one of those things where it's like, if you promise something that is so far fetched in my mind, and we're, it's like you said, seeing eye to eye, I'm like, listen, get me to win a small show before you say that to me. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, like, if you haven't won a small show and you come to me and say, I can get you in the top five at the Olympia, I'm like, Listen, no, just you're get, just a salesman. You're yeah, a salesman. Just, get, just get me to win the Tampa Pro first, yeah. and then we'll fucking talk. Like, yeah. so it just turned me off immediately because I'm like, I don't like people who overpromise and underdeliver. It's like yeah. I'd rather you underpromise and overdeliver, right? Correct. Right. Right. Uh, it's actually so. that's actually something that kind of I, I don't know whether, but turns me on towards a coach is when they like I feel kind of like feel like they think I ain't shit, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like when I come to them and I'll be like, say this, and they're just like, cool, whatever. Yeah. Like, let's go, you know? Like, yeah. where it's not like it's like over excitement or, or it's like just like yep good you know yeah that's uh that's one of the things i used to love about actually all the coaches i had were straight up like you know i would talk to john i'd be like do you think i'm gonna win the show he's like well i don't know this guy's really good yeah. he's like let's yeah. shoot, let's try and aim for okay, second or third why i like this i'll explain why i like this is because it creates a very like good foundation of trust in terms of like what their word says like that's right so if i go into a show and you know they're like you're gonna fucking blow the doors off the show or like you stand a very good chance of winning the show i believe them yes. you know and that's good and if they if we don't go in with that expectation i don't you know and like i think that's one thing with patrick i mean with i mean everyone i've worked with but you know especially with patrick now like we've always been very realistic in our expectations you know like i'm never like showing up at the olympia you know thinking i'm, I'm doing something that i can't my physique just not ready yeah. for you know ben, um, do you, ben do you ever how do you how are you as a coach you probably under promise or do you just are you just straight up level as honest as you can be or do you play the game um, where you like you try and pump their tires a bit to get them to train harder? Like, what is your what's your it, thing? It, it depends on the person, right? I, it, exactly. I was gonna say it's a wish. Everyone responds to different. Yeah. As a, as a coach, it's my job to get the best out of that one person. Yeah. And that that one person is gonna respond differently to different types of th things. You know, some guys need that. Like, if they go in confident because you've been blowing them up on a personal level, but now their body's gonna be responding really well because they're confident. Yeah, 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 stressed yeah, right yeah. if i play too low-key with that kind of person they're yeah. like something's wrong fuck fuck and it's not they're just overthinking now mm -hmm. so if someone's an overthinker i might need to be on them a little more yeah yeah i think that's what that's what when people ask me i feel like that's what hani does best that's his like his absolute best trait in my opinion is knowing exactly what he has to say to each person yeah and, and i, th to, I, mean, I think to really charge them up I think that's a sign of like elite coaching in, in any form though. Like whether you go like, you know, go to NFL coaching, yeah. basketball coaching, anything, those guys that really know how to like get the most out of each individual is really what brings a good coach, you know? And like I, what I take versus Nick or you or, or Ben or, you know, anyone, what takes to get the most out of us can be completely different. You could be yeah. a guy that wants to be just shit on. You want your picture said and be like, yo, I just want criticism. I don't want anything good. I just want yeah. garbage. Where if yeah. I, you said one thing like that to me, I might just cry and then my performance <laughs> will go in the shitter. You know? yeah. Yeah. True. So it's yeah. like, you know, you got to kind of read the field and, and that's how you get the most out of everyone. Right? It um, is, it's something I do have to switch off because my natural default is to see everything that's wrong. Yeah, criticize, right? yeah, yeah. I'm a natural yeah. citizen. Uh, yeah. And when I'm talking about the high level guys, I don't need to applaud what's great on them because mm. it's a given. I need to bring up their weakest thing possible. So my natural default is sometimes just to, be, to go, they send a checking picture and I'll just like, break it down be like, this is wrong that's wrong do this do that and then i have to take a second is that too much is that too honest for that person but wait yeah. a second that's actually a good point so to me the mental game on a level one amateur is not far off the mental game of a top pro like the top a top pro might still be um it might still affect them in a negative way if you just pick out all their shit right yeah like if you just assume that they know they're good in these areas, like, so if you're training, like if you're helping Hunter or you're training somebody else who's like coming up, you still know, like, do you still give them props for their good shit, even though they know it's probably their good shit? Uh, no, well, if we're going to use Hunter as an example yeah. in this, then no, then no, I don't say anything good to him. <laughs> but, but you know, he's the kind of person that doesn't want to hear it. He has everyone else to tell him that yeah oh i see yeah but like, you're but, what oh, wait a minute fuck? but you're i'm there no, no no i'm there to deliver a job if i don't do my my job is that my job isn't to tell him this is great that's great you're doing this right you're doing that otherwise what's the point of me being there he has a stack full of people okay but wait a minute i agree with you but if every person in the world on instagram tells him he's amazing 
yeah it doesn't matter as much as his coach telling him that right like no no and that, and that's why when the time is right yeah and that that's when you and, and like Ian said you drop that in and then they go holy fuck this motherfucker's never said anything good yeah, if you're yeah. saying it now then it it I See, can that believe was, it that was my style. from the olympian you're like i think we hit the fucking nail on the head and then they're like really fuck like that's good you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick, you've been pretty quiet. So let me ask you. So what, how much do you need from a coach and what kind of coach do you like? Do you like him to still tell you, still give you the praise along the way to keep you motivated? Or you just like somebody shit on you the whole time? Or like, what is your, well, I like a little praise. I don't need to be shitted on the whole time. Um, yeah. But if there's something wrong or I'm doing something not right or whatever the case is, you know, yeah. tell me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. You know, Especially like during a show, if there's really competitors, like don't say you're gonna win. Like this is gonna be fucking tough. You yeah. you can pull it off, but you got to be on your A game. You know, mm-hmm. shit like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. What do you like for that, Fuad? I just like honesty. I don't want to hear bad. I don't want to hear good. I just want somebody to be straight up honest. If my straight legs up. are, if my legs look full as fuck, I want my coach to be like, your legs look really good this week. If my if my arms look like shit, I want him to be like, your arms are flat. We need to do whatever. Right? Like. Yeah, I, just, yeah, yeah. I don't want anybody to pump my fucking tires and I don't want anybody to shit on me. I just need to be just yeah. straight down the middle. You know what I mean? Do you know what's weird? I think I'm the opposite of what I do, uh, the way I coach. You need a lot of p- tire pumping? No, it's not like I need it. I shit on myself more than anyone else can. <laughs> like, People like shit on themselves so, that more for sure. Yeah, I'm like, if you tell me <laughs> something's wrong, I'm like, I already fucking know that. Like, you don't need yeah. something that's wrong. I it's like a reaffirmation everything. that like almost makes it worse in your head, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I actually I thought, thought I was the only this. one that saw it, you know? Yeah. So then when I'm like that, if I see that in a client, then I go, okay, don't shit on him too hard. When you, you know, guys, when you guys all send in check-in pictures, do you always send in all of them, or do you hold back the worst oh, ones? I, I sometimes I don't send them all. <laughs> I don't okay. send them all. I'm so glad you're honest. <laughs> Wait, but I don't like. I'll send a video, and I I send a video with just like a front pose, a side pose, and a back pose, and that's yeah. it. Correct. But you, but you oh. won't do the one you know you look like shit in. Oh, like I ain't hitting a front double in a fucking. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> I will yeah, never. You know, I, I never I, hit. I try. Or side, my you side try is good. My side try is good, and I would still never hit a side try in a practice shot unless I was like three days out. And I just I don't, I don't do ab and thigh. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> no, I don't do front or back lat spreads. <laughs> See, I, Nick, okay, most I'm, muscular side chest. Yeah. Back yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Ben, go ahead. What are you saying? <laughs> I'm the complete. I'm the complete opposite of these guys. If yeah, I you're that, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't send the fucking video. It'd just be set up and no no one would ever walk in front of the camera yeah what do you fuck yeah if i took out all my bad shots all of them are it bad, would just be so them, uh, <laughs> just be nothing yeah. um <laughs> no i send i send the video i literally from the start yeah no i send a video but i literally i'll turn on my camera i just hit front lat side chest back double oh no pat, pat gets like a minute and a half of me yeah. going through every oh, i know i know pat through. hates that i that it hates that i do that but it's just like a habit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right so we covered coaches what do you like? Do you send all the everything? Oh fuck! You're no. a send everything guy. Eh? <laughs> I never, I never do ab and thighs. Okay, well, no, other than like ab and thigh, because no one hits an ab and thigh. Like other yeah. than that, you know, like I send everything. I'm oh, actually, there's... I feel okay about the rest of my shit. So I'm yeah. like, I send every, it's just ab and thigh. I don't send. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not sending that fucking shit. No. Not I until I'm absolutely. I can't even do a side try right now. Yeah, side try until you're like three or four weeks out is actually yeah. kind of hard. It's hard to yeah. grab. Yeah. Yeah. It's not um, happening. No. Okay, so coaches, we have a host of a host of options. Who Nick's not gonna Ooh. Nick's not gonna hint. I'm ready to hear the company ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we all agree, hostile is probably the best company for Nick, right? Is that what we're saying? Good we're options. All, we're all saying that already. No, okay. Be honest. Pretend I'm not here. I can think of three good options for Nick in my mind. Okay, let's hear them and be straight up. Don't pick mine first if it's not first. Well, okay, I'm, I'm just going to say them in no no order. No, pick them so in think, order. I want to know in order. Well, just let me say them out, and then we can order them. <laughs> <Just later>. <laughs> I want to know this exactly. Be your fucking order. <laughs> you, you, I think, um, with Redcon and him doing stuff with... Uh, blessing. With Blessing a lot, yeah. I think that would be good and good content yeah. for them. And that, like, that kind of, the kind of, like, a... Uh, marketing stuff they put in with like those like kind of funny silly videos and like you know i think you know i'm blessing snorting fucking shit like i think him and nick could pair well in those kind of marketing tools yeah. i can see them actually working really well 
Um, and I could also see him with uh, Ferrosi's brand. I don't know if I see him with Ferrosi's, but Ferrosi's brand is a is a it's almost like a bodybuilding slash lifestyle brand, but not like a fruity lifestyle. It's like a bodybuilding yeah, but, I mean, slash so, roughness. So is, so is Raw and Revive, and I mean Nick was doing great here too. So I mean it's not like. You know, I mean, we're Raw and Reviver by no means. Raw is definitely not a hardcore bodybuilding company. I mean, it's I thought like they were trendy, you know, but I thought they were going that way in the beginning and they kind of turned a bit. Yeah, well, like, initially it was more hardcore bodybuilding. That's what I mean. More, like, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like in the beginning, I thought Raw was going more hardcore bodybuilding. So they had you, Nick and then they had you and it kind of makes yeah. And then now it kind of turned the corner. So I feel like Axe and Sledge is definitely bodybuilding, but they also have like this lifestyle-y roughneck thing going on. Yeah, and I don't know if I see Nick as a roughneck. Nick, are you a roughneck? No. You, don't, you don't chop wood and shit, do you? I'm not guy, you know. I'm not chopping wood every day. <laughs> we'll have to get him out there chopping wood with guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, ben, what do you think? Um, I actually thought the Redcon thing was that was my knee jerk reaction. Just seeing everything that was going on, yeah. um, having been with them and knowing what they do for their athletes, um, there's a lot there. But I'm. Then you're also with, and I, I don't know if this is a problem for Nick because he's so high caliber, but then there's there's so many athletes that starts to detract. Well, to me, that detracts, right? Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. a company has a roster of guys and it's just everyone's an ambassador, everyone's got a code. Yeah, that to me detracts. Yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah, where, yeah. that's where Redcon to me has a slight drawback. I'm like, it's yeah. like a little Everyone. more like old school, too much. Much. Like, like Walmart y. Yeah. 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 I I go, go ahead, Ben. Sorry. That's, um, your, that's your first one. Who else? My, well, I'm obviously a big advocate of the hostile thing. Um, okay. I think that's a the good fit. And again, there's multiple reasons that just make sense for that one. You well, know, people, people are going to think you're selling. So let's skip that one. Go to the third one. No, I said the same thing about Redcon. I said there's no, no I know. I know, but sense. okay. Um, I'm not sure I have a third one. Do I have a third one? Ian said he had three. I didn't. I didn't say shit. Do you have a third? Do you don't have a third? Off the I mean, top of my most, head. The, the, most, like, the, the most obvious answer, not that I think they could... I was about to say, I think the same thing. Go on. I think the it's most the name, obvious right? answer, not that I think they could get Nick, but if they did, it would be kind of cool too, is obviously Mutant, you know? Yes, right. Yeah, no. exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah. only because of that one only thing. Only because of the name. Just because of the word, so what? Literally only because of the name. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it does factor in... It's a, it's a thing. Don't the just rush it off like... Like his nickname isn't the mutant, and he has a source called the mutant source. I'll create a hostile mutant product tomorrow. Right. Just put a label. <laughs> put a piece of tape. I'll put a piece of tape on the hostility. The mutant. <laughs> mutant. <laughs> that's the worst. Listen, okay, that's a reason. Juice. That's a reason, but it's the worst reason to pick a company. Don't be mad because they're just another Canadian company like you, okay? We're not Canadian. So, we're, we're American. We're American. You're Canadian. You know what I mean. No, listen. Yeah, they're our, from Chicago, right? Our Chicago. company is registered, shipped, an American brand. and manufactured in America. Yeah. We're an American company. I'm a Canadian person. We're an American company. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's, it's true. And I have nothing against Canada. Just a lot harder to launch here. So Canadians, I love you. And we'll be here as soon as we can, but we just had to get started in the U.S. Um, I have, I thought Redcon was a good one because they're a, a bodybuilding company. They're more of a, how can I put it? Like a mainstream bodybuilding company. There's not as much as a hardcore bodybuilding company. See, like a BSA. See I would disagree. I, th I think they used to be a bodybuilding company. Well, that's why I said mainstream because they're not like hardcore. They're now, they're now like real heavy on into everything else you know that that's where i, I think you change. can be i think you can be into some other areas and still be a bodybuilding company no yeah yeah like if you're a bodybuilding company but you also sponsor like an mma guy or maybe a, a fucking olympic i mean athlete. i think it's good as any company if you're selling performance supplements to diversify your you know obviously i think if you're niche and you're a hardcore bodybuilder and that's where you started i think you should keep your most of your chips in there but i think yeah. That's not, that's a pretty fucking small market. Let's be serious. Well, you know? there's a lot of money in that. Small you gotta, market, you have you to gotta think go of, a little mainstream. You have to yeah. think of it. No, well, I, I will say this. So in my opinion, and, and you can only go so mainstream because I've seen a lot of companies. Oh, go, I agree. I've seen a lot of companies go heavy mainstream, like 
and they just start to fail because they the go main too far. Thing, there's, there's got to be a happy medium. Yeah, yeah. Or you lose all credibility in your prime market. You know, like, right. you know, once you see companies, companies going into CVS and Walmart, and Walgreens, yeah. like, eh, you know, usually when those companies do that, they're, they're dosing changes and their formulations yeah. change. And that's mm-hmm. how they can afford to do that. Yeah. And that's one of my things. Redcon's formulas at the very beginning. Yeah. Were, were, were very good. Yeah. Now I think they're just good. Okay. I didn't know they changed them. That, that, that's a conservative answer. Did they change them <laughs> or did you just did they change good, them or did you just find, did you just find yeah, better? Yeah, there's, there's, uh, no, there's some stuff that they changed and maybe didn't advertise that they changed some things. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Um, like it wasn't, it wasn't like they did a relaunch or anything is what I mean. Yeah, it yeah, just yeah. got changed. In my opinion, I think Redcon, but it's a little too mainstream for for Nick's look, but I do like the blessing Nick combination, like for videos and stuff. So I see Ian's point there. Um, yeah, I think our company is sell us. Me, maybe I'm maybe I'm in the fucking maybe I'm, maybe I'm in a maybe I'm in a bubble, but I think we're a bodybuilding company first before many other companies. Yeah. I I don't really know any other companies that are more hardcore bodybuilding than us. No, that's right, what ben. my point was when I was talking about a bodybuilding okay. company, as in you literally, and I know it's because you're just starting out, there's nothing, it's all focused towards bodybuilding. But that's not big. But, and I, I, but I was only defining it by that pure sense of. But I will say, but I will say this. So I know we're just, we're only two years in, but I don't plan on becoming no. mainstream. If we do something mainstream, it'll be a separate line. We're always going to have the hardcore. But you know how, you know how animal kind of yeah. they, they're just i mean yes okay powerlifting too but they've always been those two that, that that's all they did yeah they yeah. haven't tried to fuck off and invade everyone else yeah yeah they just oh. went this is who we are yeah, yeah. Well, go, go ahead, kind of because they had universal which was the other side of it yeah they did have a separate right. mainstream yeah. so like they like you said it would have to be separated you need to separate yes. the like you know yeah i like i see people think people say things like and i, I don't think it's wrong to say bodybuilding is a small niche market but that small niche whoa, has whoa, whoa. a lot of a lot of money in it. Like it's not, well, there's a lot, there's a lot of customers and there's a lot of money and there's enough to make a very big company off of bodybuilding alone. I don't have to go. No, no. You know, what I'm saying is in terms of the actual people competing in like high-end bodybuilding is small. The people that buy supplements from your company aren't exclusively yeah. hardcore bodybuilders. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, I there's agree. There's that are 20 years old that just like go to the gym and wear their alpha elite leggings. And you know what I mean? Like it's going to be tons of those kind of people too. I don't yeah, think yeah. I'll, I don't think I'm ever really going to chase those people. I'm, I'm, I, no, and I don't want to say, I don't want to say never there. because somebody will clip this and record it and show it to me in five years. So I don't want to say never, but I don't plan. Like, I don't have any, like we have a five-year roadmap. I don't have any plans to, to diverge from. No, but they're, they're buying, they're buying it right now. So it's like, you know? Yeah. 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 And if someone, and if someone said, Hey, if we had, you get into uh, like going CrossFit and then you can get your yacht, I bet you fucking change. No, I wouldn't. Tell me you no, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Yacht, yeah, you would. No, because yeah. now you know what that sounds like? That sounds like a money hunger. You want to buy a yacht, so yes. But not at the expense, <laughs> but not at the expense of my passion or integrity. Right. So, like if if somebody said it's so interesting you said that. Somebody said this uh in a post. Cause Machiavelli did a video and somebody commented and wrote, wrote, Oh, so you don't want to make money. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm running a business, I'm providing products. I'm providing quality products. I do want to make money. It's a business, of course. but, but there's different ways to make money. You can release underdose products with superior marketing that kind of take advantage of the consumer and make get my yacht in, in three years. Right. Or I can put really quality products out and make less margin and it might get my yacht in 20 years. So you still get that yacht, <laughs> but yeah, but one is by cheating people and one is not. That's the yeah. difference, right? So I have no problem with business people making money, but just do it in an honest way. So that's kind of where I think our company's a little different. Yeah. So, um, yeah. No, yeah, I, do I don't want... think. Go ahead, I think Ian. it's a good thing too that people are getting a lot more informed in terms yeah. of like what are good supplements and stuff, and like the days of like just hiding behind like proprietary blends and this kind of bullshit yep. that like yeah, yeah. all these big companies Gone. did in like 2010 Gone. and before. I think that that's, that just doesn't fly now. Like if I went no. into a place that was like proprietary blend and the whole thing is like 600 milligrams, you know, I would be like, 
the fuck is this shit? You know? I know, I know. So, I mean, like you want to see the breakdown. People know the ingredients now. They know that, oh, if I want to pump, I look for a citrulline or, you know, arginine yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. People know these kind of things now, which I think is good too. So yeah, when you're trying deal. to put out better product, quality products, over time, it will catch up with itself, you know? I and, I, and, I was, and I was approached by that when I started Hostile. They're like, hey, you know, you don't got to do this. They're like, this formula is like, there's too much. And I'm like, I want to do what's best and let people catch up to it, right? Because like people are like, you're going to, what I was told is like, you're going to have to do a lot of education. Like you're going to have to really teach people what this stuff is and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'd rather do that than not put out the thing that I want to use. So it just, I just just think the whole, the entire like knowledge and science behind just working out and training is just so much more prevalent now. You know I mean? Like people are into it and like, you know, with social media and like all these YouTube, like, you know, I bet 90% of people like, you know, or watching some kind of fucking fitness or diet tip or something on YouTube in some capacity, yeah. you know? So people are learning this shit quick, right? Yeah, yeah. But companies still find a way to... Oh, of course. It, right? Of course. There, like, there are always, course. always people that are there to be tricked, 100%. Good <laughs> marketing can always trick lots of people, for sure. Agree. Yeah. yeah. But I think the more information and the more things we have, tools we have at our disposal, you can obviously limit that. You can't eliminate it, obviously. We don't, but you no. can limit the amount of people that are selling garbage products and getting away with it. We don't really talk about supplements on here too much. You notice that? No. I always, I always am scared to do it because I don't want people to think I'm selling something, right? Right. But, so, but, you put, so you instead you put the big fucking banner behind you. Oh, well, yeah. I gotta represent. That's different. No, no one will notice. <laughs> no one will notice that. <laughs> no, I gotta represent. That's different. But what I mean, like, we don't actually talk about what I, I think part of the reason I shy away from it is I don't want people to think that I'm selling something. But, but just in general, we talk about everything about bodybuilding, but we never talk about supplements. Mm. Yeah. So like, we're not, we're not doing a good job of educating but that do way. You, do, you, but do you think that that would limit some of us because of us wanting to be respectful of our contracts and protect them? I think that's why like, I don't talk about it as much. Cause I don't want, you know, Ian's with Raw and Revive and Nick was with Raw and Revive and uh, you know, James is with Redcon yeah. and guys with Blackstone. So I try not to like, Create any yeah, conflict, it, yeah, yeah. conflict, right? But Ron Revive has good products, so I don't think there's any problem with us saying anything. And like, you know, like I'm sure whatever I say. No, no, what I mean is this, but at some point you're gonna there's gonna be a comparison made, and your reasons that you think that's that probably part of the reason. And... Yeah, that's probably part of the other reason why I don't bring it up is I don't want to conflict with any of the guys. Anyways, uh, if you guys let's do this. If you guys want us to talk more about supplements and what is good and what is bad not necessarily what companies, but like ingredients or formulations, comment below. Let us know. Yeah. Comment. <laughs> like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like, don't, I didn't do that. I didn't say that. Turn, Turn your notifications on. Hit that bell. Hit that Hit bell. That bell I don't do that shit. You guys are <laughs> assholes. We'll do it for you. Sorry. Um, Close open the door of the bedroom. What the fuck is going on out of <laughs> All right, Nick. So we helped you. Have we helped you decide anything or no? We've been on this for half an hour now. We decided everything. It's done. Good. He signed already. We're good so to go. So he's going to go to, so he's going to Hani and Hostile. Is that what we're doing? Yep. Done. Done. All oh, right. We'll, we'll do this. Let's take all, we'll ask everyone on the show. Well, we should do this. Everyone on the show, we ask them, we take them all on a piece of paper. We put them in a hat, two different hats, yeah. you know, a brand hat and a coach hat. And, and he's got to go to whoever we say. Things, yeah. And that's it. Done. Can I fill out the papers and put them in the hat? No. So I'm gonna, <laughs> right, we're all gonna say <laughs> no, we'll get a neutral third party to do it. A neutral third party. Okay. I'll tell Summer to do it. My wife. We'll do it for it. fun, anyways. We should do this for fun just to see what the answer is. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the minute it's three for three, right? Yeah, we all agree. Yeah. Well, Ian didn't put anything in order, though. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's all in there, you know? It's in there. You wanted me to name names. You can't even put in orders. I gave three. You guys only gave two. Fuck you. I gave three. <laughs> you gave two. Okay, me. I gave three. I didn't I'm going to put them in order. I'm going to put them in order. In order. Okay. Hostile. Redcon. You did. Yes. Yeah, but we did third. <laughs> Mutant. Mutant was my third. Oh. <laughs> I even gave four then. I gave four. <laughs> I can't. Let me see. I think of a third for Nick. That would be good. For okay, I'll Nick. do it then. I'll go hostile, Redcon, Axe and Sledge. Mutant. I can't hold up four fingers. There you go. <laughs> I could see I could see Axis Ledge as a third, but I feel like the problem with Axis Sledge might be that he'll be overshadowed by Seth. I don't think so. 
Seth is a very, very Seth is a very popular individual. Seth's very popular, but so is Nick, and Nick is a you know a top five Olympian. You know, Wait. Seth is obviously cool, but it's it's a different world. Don't, shut up, Ben. Don't shut up, Ben. <laughs> no, go ahead, Ben. I think I know where you're going. What does he it. know? You can't up, say <laughs> you can't say isn't Seth gonna overpower when you and Seth would cancel each other out in that deal. I've stepped back already. I'm not even like a fa- like you guys are all of, all the athletes are in front of me. Well, let Nick host the podcast then. No, the podcast is not. <laughs> no, no. The okay. pod- he tried, <laughs> no, he no, tried no. one week. He, oh, you were. I said week. again. I said do it again. Okay, Nick, no. you're on. Go. No, 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 no. Okay. no. <laughs> um, no. I could see, I could see Axel Sledge. Seth, Seth is a very Seth loves bodybuilding, and uh, yeah, I think, and he treats that people, he treats people right. So I could see that being a good fit too. Um. All right. So we got we got Nick's future set up. What's going yeah. on? What's everybody else doing? Ian, how are you? Went to the beach. Are you 305 yet? No. What are you waiting for? I, mean, I have been on the scale at 305, but I'm not a consistent 305. But at no. night, not in the morning. Uh, uh, later in the day, not night, but yes. <laughs> he won't say it. <laughs> after meal three. After You're meal so three. funny. You're like... <laughs> I've been 301 in the morning pretty consistently. Okay. Nick did freeze for real this time, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he's not that good of an actor. No. What the fuck? Ben, what's going on with you, man? How are you? Good man. A lot. What's well, Brett was just, Brett just left today too. Brett was here. Well, how was that? Yeah. Good. He's I training. saw some training clips. You guys were going hard. Yeah. Yeah. Was it good? How's right. Ben look? How's uh, Brett looking? R- ridiculous. That Very fucking ridiculous. picture he posted. I'm gonna show people yeah. in case they haven't seen it. And trust me, I was sitting in that room. It looks a lot better in person than that picture, too. I can imagine. Fuck. Mm-hmm. You know, after I saw that, I was like, he might push Brandon Curry. When, I, when he took his clothes off after we trained that day and, and he was posing, like if I was like thinking of it, how his upper body looked and like the fullness and roundness of it. I'm like, if I was standing backstage and this guy was standing next to me, I would be like, holy shit, you know? Look at this shit. Just off the shoulders, right? I mean, his shoulders, his upper chest and traps and like rear, like this upper shelf here. This right here, like, yeah. Yeah, from his pec, like mid pec above is yeah. so thick, man. It's crazy yeah. how thick he is. It's like his chest is fucking choking him. It's fucking yeah. crazy. And we didn't train chest this day, too. We had just trained shoulders, but not chest. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. his face I mean, was fucking hard. Like, I mean, everything looks crazy good. Back is dense. Like, I mean, look at the mirror behind him. Look at I'm his looking. Back. I'm looking. You see his glutes here fucking yeah. in. Like, And that's at 260. He still is 260 in that picture. Yeah, it's like he's lost, like, two pounds. And, but he's gotten yeah. way harder because he was 262, yeah. like, yeah, he said he came ago. down, like, he came down, like, 10 pounds in the first three weeks. And then he's been 260 for, like, 10 weeks. Yeah, just getting harder and harder and harder yeah. at that weight. Yeah. I'm, I'm starting to think. Strong, man. I mean, like, he was still Nick? shoulder pressing. He was still shoulder pressing four plates for, re- like, 10 reps. I know? saw that. That's crazy. Yeah, because yeah. you got 12, right? You got I'm 12 in your full round off season. Like yeah. Two and a half more reps than him. Yeah. I think yeah. Nick got upset that we were talking about his career. He left. <laughs> I think it froze and he left. <laughs> do, you think, do you think he's like, fuck this shit? I don't want to talk about my career anymore? No. What's up? Um, Nick, all you're right. back. We lost you there. Nick. Sorry, I, I lost I thought, internet. I thought you were upset that we were covering your whole life for half an hour. Oh no, I don't give a shit. No. Hey, hey wait, have you have you have you covered the girlfriend side of things? Oh <laughs> ah, I forgot about that. I got like a million messages about it. Nick, I got messages about it. How's your girlfriend? She's she's good. How long you been together? We just started dating. How long is it gonna last? Two weeks? <laughs> Who I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm hoping. No, you're not. I'm hoping it's. I'm hoping it's forever, Nick. I really am. Hey, if this lasts two weeks now, aren't you gonna feel like an asshole? No, I'll be like, it lasted two weeks. It's great. We're still rolling. <laughs> this is gonna be over bodybuilding and balance Instagram. Like, told you tomorrow. Yeah, I know. Um, what's going on, Nick? So tell me about her. She's Canadian. She's from your neck of the woods. Yeah, she's I Canadian. I don't know anything about her. I've seen her around at the gym sometimes, but I don't know anything about her. Oh. oh, yeah. She said she met you and you blew her off. She tried to say hi. Come on. Hi That's back. fucking bullshit. What the fuck? Did she really? Yeah. Who asked? Oh. Tell her I said I'm sorry. This is a thing. Hey, I bet. No, no, no I'm I, serious. Tell her I said I'm sorry. Was Summer there? No. Summer was, <laughs> no, no. Was Summer was there. there. Listen. He's blinkered like this. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. I'm nope. going to tell you guys nope. the truth. This has happened to me my whole fucking life, my whole adult life. Because of my anxiety 
and I'm not like comfortable with people until I get to know them. Sometimes when I meet people, I'm just quiet. So I was probably like, Hey, and I probably just kind of turned away. I, I, by no means ever mean I'm ever mean to be rude. So she please. said, you said, she said, you said, fuck you. And then walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I'm serious. Shoot her a text. Say Fuad said he's sorry. And he was not intent, not intending to be rude at all. I'll text her. I'll let her know. All right. Anyway, not accept your apology. So, <laughs> she's going to hate me forever for, yeah. for the one meeting. I got to make up for it now. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. And I, if I got to send her flowers or something, if I could say sorry. <laughs> um, so what's going on? Tell me about her. Is she, is she, is she what? How old is she? She's 31. Ooh, getting older. Who goes? Yeah, she looks like she's like 20, though. That's not bad, though. That means when she's 50, she's going to look 30. Well, yeah. Because we're, we're, we're all going to look 90 when we're 50. That's, so. that's right. <laughs> yeah. Look at me. I look like I'm 60 already. Wait, you look, you look younger than me, and I'm like 12 years younger, 10 years younger than you. No, it's only because all these lights. If I turn the lights off, I'd be fucking, I look way older. I feel like James, I feel like James is the oldest looking one. James looks the oldest. Yeah. But that's James is like, yeah, yeah. lucky with my dad. That's only because half the time he lets his hair grow into the fucking <laughs> hair. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. He lets the Mr. Burns go. And yeah. Like, yeah. James is one of the youngest too, isn't he? He's 30 yeah. one, isn't he? Me, right? Yeah, 31. Yeah, Ian, and, Ian and James are at the same age. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think he's like a year older than me. He's like 31, 32. But yeah, he uh, when he's clean shaven head and trims his beard, he looks way younger. Yeah, yeah. Like, 100%. I mean, I even just trimmed mine down a lot and, and like got a haircut and I feel like I look like five years younger from me. You know? Yeah, you do. You do. Yeah. Um, okay, 31. What's she do for a living? She owns a candle, candle business. Oh, that's good. She's and a, she does like candles. She's an entrepreneur. Like yeah, and she does coaching too. Did she come visit you in Florida? Yeah, she just left. Did she bring candles? Yeah, she did. Did you, <laughs> like, yeah. did you like candles? Do I like them? No, I mean like when she just because she owns does she light oh, them yeah, like during dinner up. and stuff? Yeah, we lit them bitches up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see you being a candle person. Like if it smells good, I like it. I know, but I don't see you being like, let's go to the bedroom. I'd light some candles. I don't see you being that. Oh, no, but with this no. guy, wait, she can wait, light. When you're not lighting candles. No, when you're trying to get pussy and she makes candles, you light candles too. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right>. yeah. <laughs> Babe, I love your candles. Let's light those. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Nick. I'm happy for you, man. Yeah. You know, the nice thing is she competes too. So she probably gets it all. She's not going to bug you about anything. And she's got her own business. No, she was, she was actually really cool. Like she was here. Almost two weeks. Really? Yeah, she almost two weeks. Yeah. If she if she would have stayed till Sunday, it would have been two weeks. So yeah, pretty much. And she was like, she didn't annoy me at all. And I was shocked. But that's <laughs> yeah. That's good. Normally that's like, a good, that's, good that's, that's a good stuff. But that's actually, you know what? You're right. Because when you first meet somebody, it's always fun being around them. But if they're there for two weeks straight, you might be like, eh. Well, it's also different because like they're coming right into like she's coming right into your life like seeing what you it's not like Everything. oh we're just hanging for two hours going on a date and going home you know yeah it, it's she's so i had to be like comfortable as shit. how many like, bathrooms I, how many bathrooms do you have in your house two where's the second one like the further away from the bedroom yeah yeah do you use that how one bad when are, over? how bad are your bowels man because that's like the thing you're thinking about i just uh, listen i remember when i <laughs> Who wants to take private shit? <laughs> I'm only saying oh, because no, when I started bro, you, I, you blow the, you blow the no, fucking when doors I started off dating summer, I was like pissed off because I only have one bathroom in a one bedroom apartment, and it was like right next to the fucking bedroom. So I'm like, yeah. I have no privacy. You know what I mean? No, bro. I I went I went right in my normal bathroom. Really? Yep. You're like you're like this is me. Take it or leave it. Yeah. You either like me or you don't. <laughs> you're gonna I mean, get used to this. I mean, you either I mean, get used to this or you don't. This motherfucker selling squatty potties. It's clear this guy's taking shits, you know? Like, <laughs> what does she think of your squatty potty? Does she use it? I don't want to know that. Don't tell me that. Sorry. I want to know that. <laughs> I want to fucking know. Tell me. She loves the squatty potty. Hey, how could you not? <laughs> you is, she cool? Cool? Is, she, is she cool with you talking about her on the podcast? Yeah, I, I told her. She knows how open I am. She's watched these podcasts. Oh, really? She's seen them all, Fuad. You understand what I'm saying? She's seen them so all. she's seen all my oh, podcasts, so we, but she wait, doesn't wait, like. Wait, me. in that case, in, in that case, we can figure out all the kind of dirty shit she's into. <laughs> <laughs> the grin on the grin on his face. <laughs> so if she watches all the podcasts and she doesn't like me. That fucking sucks. 
No, she said she didn't like you. She just said you were rude. You didn't say hi back. I wasn't rude. Call her right. Call her right it's, now. I feel it's, bad. It's I'm not, not first I'm time. on a plane, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's not the first time someone's accused you of being rude. I mean, come on. <laughs> this, is, this is true. This is true. It's my it's my fucking resting <laughs> bitch face. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not a polite. You, in in you used to not be as nice. You're a lot nicer now. Uh, I will say, as I've matured, it's it's really it's really. I would say after like twenty eight, I've tried. It's I don't know how to put it. Like what? Like I've always really liked you. We've always kind of like got yeah. like you know never had any issues. But yeah. like I, I remember like two thousand ten twelve. You were a lot more like angry or, or anxious of a person. I think you are now. I think it's more anxious. I will. Yeah. That's why I said ang- angry yeah. slash anxious because it could because be I one. think. I think what happened was the more anxious I was, the more quiet I was. And the yes. more people took that as he's an asshole. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like my wife, my wife goes through this. Like my wife yeah. is a very quiet person. She's very shy. Yeah. And other, other women think she's being snooty, but it's like, she's you just, said, she's just yeah. a very quiet person. Right. I see that so, all the time. So I feel like because we're bodybuilders and we're big, if you're quiet, people think you're being a fucking asshole. And I'm like, yeah. you know, but yeah. I will also say that I've, I've learned I've learned to respect other people more as I've gotten older and I've yeah. learned to respect other people's opinions more as I've gotten older. But I think that happens to anybody. I mean, it's just fucking maturity, right? Like sure. yeah. the, more, the more mature you get and the more secure you get as a person, you're able to accept other people being great or being right or being, I mean, I don't like it when Ben's right or you're right over me, but sometimes <laughs> you're right. And that's just happens. But um, no, I think it happens to everybody. I think, you know, I'm yeah. 43 years old. If I was still the same guy I was when I was 30, fuck, I would yeah. be embarrassed. Yeah. Like if, I don't know the difference. If you ask anybody who knows me, the difference between 20 year old, 30 year old and 40 year old Fuad is fucking night and day. Yes. Yeah. But that should happen to anybody. Right. Like mm-hmm. think, think about like yourself when you're 20 years old. Yeah. Oh my God. How much, you, how much you've grown as a person, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Anyway. Um, so how much sex did you have? <laughs> <laughs> like, was it like, was it every, just as every day? Every day. Wait, 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 wait. We can probably work it out. What was his weight when she first got there? What was his weight when she left? He was 312 when she got there. He's 294 today. So there you go. It was 294 this morning. I know. I saw your thing. That's why I said 294. Oh, okay. Did you uh, <laughs> did you rearrange any of your schedule for her? Like, did you did you move the gym times to some other time or anything? Or were you like, you're working around my schedule? Really? I don't want to. And she was that understanding. See, that's a good girl. Yeah, yeah, but she you, trains too. Like, she, you know. no, no, I understand. I think but... guys, I think guys, bodybuilders especially, are a lot more fickle with their training time than any woman will ever be. I mean, Melissa is pretty specific. She doesn't like to train past like three or four p.m. But yeah, I think most girls, especially because Nick trains early, I don't think most girls are gonna have an issue training early. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't mean that. I mean like, I mean, I guess you're right because she competes. She's just probably no issue. But most sure. women would be like, "Why do you got to train now? Let's go for lunch." Or why do you got to? I get, you know? I get so stressed if I don't train at the same. If it's not the same, yeah. Like if we have to do something and it's like in the afternoon, so I have to train after meal one rather than meal two. Yeah, um, it changes my vibe. I'm like, I yeah. get all bound up. I'm like, fuck. When I, I was, like uh, I had to train at the same time. When I was more yeah. regimented, I always did. It was weird. Early in my career it was after three or four meals. I felt like if I had more food in me, I was better. But then later in my career, it was like after two meals. I want to go earlier in the day. I did too. Yeah. I'm the same yeah. as you. It used to be, I like to be three, four, and now I'm like two. One, I, definitely no. Two yeah. is good. Yeah, I used to- Nick do does that. one, right? You do one, yeah. Oh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do yeah. that. I used it's to really have... not that bad. No. I think it's probably- You know what it is? To also. Yeah. It's also in a prep for me. When I finish training, the meals can't come quick enough and I'm like, fuck. So if yeah. I train too early, I run out like I run yeah. out of food. Yeah. There's a whole yeah. day. Yeah. Like whole 7.30 day in front PM, of you. you're like shit. Yeah. 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 Um what was I gonna say? I lost my train of thought. Anyway, um, let's do some questions. No, let's talk about the Arnold. Oh yeah. Okay. Brett is looking crazy. Yep. Can he push Brandon Curry? Ian, you saw him, so you know. But I have to say, I have to also say before we go on. Brandon's little body look, Brandon's legs look that they've come up as well, by the way. I have to, I have to show this because I saw these photo, this photo, and I was like, since we showed Brett's. Brandon's? Yeah, this, this one. In the doorway. The one in the doorway, right? Like, what the fuck? 
crazy. I know. Like that looks better than he looked at the Olympia. I mean, agree. Yeah. This, this photo is structured to the nines, but you can still tell. Obviously, he's in good condition. His his fullness and roundness is insane. I think his yeah. legs look amazing there. His That's what I said. His legs, are, his legs are where they come up a lot. Yeah, especially like because he he already started building the adductors inwards to kind of compensate, but now the actual quad looks like it has more meat. That's what it. I was going to say. The outer quad, yeah. especially, looks like it's got yeah. more meat on it. I mean, even mm-hmm. his teardrop, like his teardrop, looks way bigger. Yeah. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. He's looking good, man. He looks really good. I mean, this is look. This guy's a a ex <laughs> Olympia. He played second last year, right? I mean, like he's going to be hard for anyone to beat. Do I think Brett could? Sure. Do I think he will? Uh, no, but I mean, th- he's going to really push him in some shots that I, I saw for sure. Like, I mean, I, uh, I have, I have Brett in the top three. Yeah. yeah when I, I saw him take his shirt off, I was as impressed as I would ever be seeing a guy like Brandon or Phil backstage taking their shirt off, you know? Yeah. I definitely have Brett in second. I don't know if he'll be able to overcome this yet. No, I think, I think honestly, I, what a really good battle is going to be is going to be Bonac and Brett is going to be a very oh, good battle. So I, of, I thought I, 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 want, I want to see Regan. I want to see Regan and Brett. Was, yeah. I mean, yeah. Regan looked crazy too. There was a picture of Bonac I saw and I can't remember which. That yeah, was the back shots. I eh? go to no, the No, tag. no, no, no. Somebody posted a picture of, I, I know now what the difference is. And obviously we all say it, but. When you see it, it's very glaring. Somebody, one of these bodybuilding pages posted uh, his 2017 look versus his 2021 oh, look. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I don't know. Tagged, click his tag. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We can try that. It was very, very dramatic. It's not, it's not there. But the difference was very, very dramatic in the leg. He's just kind of shrunk down, right? It's, it's crazy. Like, there's so much fullness. Like, this is an older photo. There's so much fullness in the leg. Yeah. Right, but it's then, not there. No, it's the most recent ones. It's definitely faded, and I think that's going to yeah. be what yeah, we I have. Know. That's definitely going to be the biggest thing for him. Well, we just about, have to see. About, if... um, how about Samson? Samson looks incredible. Samson looks good. Oh, I don't think he quite has enough muscle quite yet, but he. I mean, from shape, I think he'll be battling guys like Regan and that, like, and Steve and that kind of like. His legs look great, man. I don't think he, he's got some size. I feel like the only thing is that he could use a little more shoulder. Yeah, his like upper yeah. shelf just needs a little more, you know. I Trap, think uh, traps dealt really good too. This is Who? the hard. This is the hardest. Justin. This is the hardest. Yeah, just this far out though. Yeah, and this this is three weeks out too. So I mean, like, yeah, this is the best this condition is going to be. I think. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to. See. I got Samson and Brett really shaking things up. Justin looks good. Uh, I, yeah, I think Justin looks really good. He looks crazy. Yeah. Yeah, these keep every fucking set of pictures he posts, he gets harder and harder. He'll, he'll harder. definitely be in the top five. It's just a matter of oh. where. So everybody's Regan, got look, pull up those pull up those back shots of Regan, just him training. I mean, his back looked crazy in those training videos. One sec before we go yeah. on. Everybody we've talked about has something they're missing, correct? Yeah or not, right? Yeah. Yes. Like if we talk about like I mean, obviously about, Brandon has the least flaws. I agree. Yes. No, 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 no just one sec. Just I just, I just want to do this so we're fair to everybody that we talk about. I don't want to single out anybody. Yeah. So if we talk about Brandon, are we all in agreement that the legs are better, but they're still not up to par with the upper body? Agreed. Okay, but they're they're not glaring they're, weakness. They're, they're a lot better though. They're, they're better. Yeah. Better. Yeah. If we talk about Brett, what is Brett's weakest body part, or something he could bring up? I think his quads still need to come up the most. Yeah. Ben, do you think uh, that too? Sweep of them. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Sweep. Yeah. Yeah. Width of the quad. Yeah. Because yeah, in his yeah. side shots, like his side chest, when I saw him hit a side chest, his legs are gigantic in a side chest or in a side yeah, tri. They're yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, but and his VMO, his VMO is monstrous, right? Yeah. yeah. But like, the thing is that like, it kind of works for his physique. Like, it looks like it flows well, but you could see that there could be more muscle on those quads, yeah. Nick, same thing, you think? Yeah, I was going to say that. And I, I thought his arms were a little small, but they look a lot bigger compared to Chicago. He, he, his arms have come up a lot since. They've come, come up a lot. We had just yeah. trained tries yesterday, so he had a little arm pump, but his arms looked pretty big when we were training. When we were when he was so, then yeah. we talked about Samson. Samson, I think shoulder. He needs a little more shoulder. Yeah. And ben or Nick, you think anything else? He still needs more back for his sure. Back could, his back. I was gonna say has, back too. Yeah. yeah. His back has come up, but it could always, you know, back can never be it's, too big. I mean, he can never with, have with, too much back. With, yeah. with his structure, he should be 275, 280 on stage. I think he actually. is. I think he was 275 last year. Was he? I was I was shocked. I had him on the podcast. Well, I he think these something. pictures that he posted, he was like two seventy two, wasn't he? I, I like don't know. 
I, I'm talking like truly in condition, like as, as oh, pure yeah. as he can be. I'm yeah, sure yeah, he's yeah. competed uh, at 270 or so, but he's never yeah. been in. Can, he's been 10 yeah. pounds off, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what uh, I mean. You put 10 pounds on that guy. Here. Yeah. You yeah. put a 10 pounds oh, on that guy and a lot of it on the shoulder and, and back, and he's very dangerous. So I'm not disputing the 10 pounds. I'm just, and I'm not, I'm not disputing anything. I'm just trying to remember the podcast I did with him. I think last year when his yeah. conditioning was pretty good, he said he was like 275. Okay. So then 10 pounds on. Last on year. that yeah and then yeah. probably a few pounds more shredded because i don't think last right. year he was all the way in yeah um yeah so that's and then we have justin so we got the justin now i, I really think justin's gonna be really good what do we what is uh, i mean what justin is the was, weak point? What, fourth at the arnold and eighth at the olympia so i mean what yeah. is the weak point if we had to pick something out i mean his quads obviously still need more separation and detail um, you know, that's that's always kind of been a thing, his legs as a whole. Tri tricep in the, both those shots as well. We're definitely improving, and his, and his midsection is obviously not an asset, you know. But, I mean, he's got tons of muscle in his back. You know, he's thick everywhere. I mean, he's not lacking any muscle, really, like, as a whole, you know. He's so, wide. He's super wide. Super wide. Shoulder to shoulder is probably one of the widest guys competing, yeah. I agree. So, my, agree. Biggest, my biggest thing is the same thing Ian said, the shoulder the quad separation, because I feel every – Every update, I see things getting deeper and deeper and more separated, but the quads, I don't see. The quads are all... getting better, but they're still not like they need yeah. to be to match up yeah. bodies. Do you think... I, I see a glaring hole on Tricep the triceps. Yeah. Triceps, yeah. triceps, yeah. triceps just like... yeah. I was gonna I was gonna say that next. This is the one. But like thing. when you look at his right. front double or back double, don't his triceps look good? Find a back double shot. Yeah. But I yeah, had that too. But I had that too. Well, it's either. weird. It's weird because he has a lot of tricep meat up closer to the shoulder, but then closer down to the elbow. There's very yeah, little. Well, it's a it's partial yeah. insertion issue. Like I had the same problem. Yeah. If I did a back double, it looked fine. But if I did a, a, a hands clasp, most muscular, it you, looked, it, bad, it yeah. looked flatter. Yeah. Flat. Yeah. Yeah. So it's and like and it's the same. It's the same on his side tricep as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How about you know, Steve Kuklo? You know, maybe. This shot, I wonder. How, I always wonder how this shot would look with his hands on hips, like the same one Brett was doing in that shot we showed. Yeah, yeah. Because it would kind of lift his arms a bit, take the tricep out of it. And I don't know if he's got the midsection to do that with. That's you know? what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, I feel like his shoulders would almost look wider if he had. That hands they on would. Hips. They would because yeah. that's why I used to do it. My waist actually was smaller when I did it. That's what I mean. That's yeah. the the ratio would look bigger. Yeah. Maybe um crazy he's still, he's still 273 in that condition there too in that picture kuklo kuklo hasn't posted shit no he's keeping it on the, keeping it under wraps i have a feeling he's gonna be really freaky too he yeah. said he's aiming for conditioning at the show and being a little lighter so yeah i think that's a good choice i agree looks like he's in good shape here this was a while back. He's right? so deceiving. Oh, he's so deceiving. Fucking how he looks online versus in person. I know because he he's sure does because he's proportionate, but he's just a big person. When you don't have context, it's impossible to tell how big he is. Like in person, oh. he's the widest fucking guy I've stood next to. He's huge. Yeah, he's gigantic. Yeah. But in I mean, pictures... he's a very Dallas McCarver frame. You know. Yeah, like like was... there, you would look at it and you'd be like, "Yeah, he's big," but like you wouldn't think he's. 285 on stage you know yeah 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 it's just the shoulder yeah. width is so crazy to me yeah he's just um, a gigantic person that absent thigh is nice there which one the, this one both hands on his head no oh on stage this one yeah no. yeah that's a sick shot yeah uh okay so are we oh and then we have regan his back looked bonkers in these picture videos training these ones? yeah crazy look at this <sighs> yeah he's got a really good back I mean, keep going. There's like five different videos of different exercises. Like, look at this. You think Gat made this fucking shirt specifically for him? <laughs> Gat strong. He's literally always, I mean, his back's been his biggest asset from mm -hmm. day one. Yeah. And now it's just getting even, it's just getting freaky. Now. Well, the insertion points have always, like, it's always been great. Now he's finally getting the thickness to, yeah. to fill it yeah. out. He has almost perfect insertion points for back shots, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah he does. Yeah, and he's, he's, actually, structurally, he's structurally a pretty big guy too so like you know that width and stuff is getting on there too well he's like eye to eye with me he's got to be over six foot yeah he's like six foot yeah 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 he looks good he looks good i think him and brett him and brett will be a good showdown yeah. i think i think what him and brett is going to come down to is who's peaked better yeah like whoever's yeah, got brett's in really really good well, matt matt doesn't miss so yeah 
that's the thing. Like if if Regan is off even just a little bit, Brett will beat him. I think yeah, Brett, like, I think Brett, Brett is be- right now would be an all time best condition for Regan, but yeah. I think Regan is going to bring an all time best condition for himself. So yeah. okay, so what what happens if Regan shows up like he did in Egypt? Brett Egypt, him. Right, a, he won't be Brett looking like that. Yeah, Brett. No him. way. No, Regan, wait, wait, wasn't Regan, Egypt? Was it Egypt? He won. Yeah, My, Regan needs. Okay. To be, yeah, he won the Egypt one. Regan needs to be better than last year to beat Brett. Yeah, Brett yeah, just has exactly. a lot. Brett has a lot of muscle through that chest, delts, arms, like trap, like upper shelf. Like I said, even his lats, like and it's that's, just everything really thick and like dense, you know. And because it's not super wide, shoulder to shoulder, yeah. it's like it's like Phil Heath, where it's all this muscles just like kind of blown in there, you know. That's the area where Regan's missing the most is that upper yeah. chest, shoulder, arm. And and I mean, neither of them have incredible quads from the front, so it's like. You know, it's here nor there. It's Regan, I would wash. say, is, Regan's very wide and good at posing as adductors from the back. Yeah. You know, he does that adductor pop, and his legs look like they're five miles wide, which is, is good for sure. Yeah. 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 And I mean, Regan's going to be very strong in the back shots. So, are we changing any of our placings? Well, what's your placing? Uh, I can pull them up, but I believe I had Curry first, uh, Curry first, uh, Brett second. I think I had Bonac third. I might want to change that. I think I might want to change mine. I don't even know what it is, though. Let me find it. Uh, nope, not that one. Nope, not that one. This who's one. uh? Did we find out who's a uh, Bonac working with for this show? No, Nichols. Chad, yeah. Uh, Ben, Paul, Justin, Nick, Brandon, yeah. Brandon, Kuklo, Bonac, Nathan, Brett. Well, Nathan's out. Ethan's out. So we'll take that I'm one. Gonna, I'm going to go Brandon, Kuklo, Brett. Brandon, Kuklo, Brett. And then what's four and five? Bonac. I'll go, um, I'm gonna go Justin, Bonac. Justin, Bonac. Okay. Uh, Ian, you had Curry, Brett, Bonac, Steve, Justin. I'm going to switch uh, Bonac and uh, Steve. So Steve... Kuklo third, Bonac fourth, Justin fifth. I could even see Justin beating Bonac, but I uh, I think that's a safe bet for now. Ben, you had Curry, Nathan, Nathan's out. Uh, Curry, Nathan, Regan, Brett, Kuklo. I'm going to go Curry, Brett, Regan. Curry, Kuklo, Brett, Justin. Regan. Kuklo, Justin. Kuklo, Justin. Oh, that's tough. Where? It's tough with Regan because I want to put Regan in that top five, but like I don't know where to put him. You know, Ben's got him at third. I had. I mean, it's it's completely possible. I mean, it's not improbable by any means. You know, I had Curry, Brett, <sighs> Bonac, Kuklo, Justin, Samson. I just I don't change. think Regan's ready to beat. I'm gonna change mine. Like Justin Kuklo. The only person that I could see him and Justin, I could see going toe to toe, and I can't see him beating Kuklo, and I can't see him beating Brad. I'm gonna uh, put and obviously Bonac but, or Brandon, sorry, but I, you know, anyone else other there, like the fourth, fifth, sixth, I could see Regan battling in those spots for sure. I, I agree with that. So I think Regan could be as high as fourth and as low as whatever, but I mean, I think I'll he's give him six. Yeah. I think he's in that four to six, four to seven range, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go Curry Wilkin. I'd like to see him in the first call out. Either way, I hope they do like a six man call out so you get some good comparisons in there. Kuklo, um, Justin, Regan. No, no Bonac in the top five. Bonac six, six. No wait, fuck, fuck. It's tough. It's it's a good show. I don't care. It's gonna be fucking. Because the top eight could go anyway. Well, se- yeah, yeah, from from kind of like second to eighth could just be. Yeah. I don't want to. Anyway. I don't want to insult anybody, but I feel like this is just subjective. I don't feel like Bonac is going to be able to re-, re bring his legs back, and if Bonac can't bring his legs back, I feel like a lot of guys are going to pull ahead of him. That's I expect he's going to be better than he was at the Olympia. You think he will be? Yes, I think he won't be judging on the last couple photos he posted. Yeah. I, don't think so. I think only because I, I know before the Olympia it had some periods where like he'd had issues with training and like there'd been some stuff going on. I know he'd been kind of infrequent and had travel issues. So I'm assuming that would have impacted his look by at least a good percentage. I was in now the boat. he's like 
Wait a minute. 100%. I, was, I was in the same boat 100% because that's what I was told. You know, he was stuck in a hotel and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But once he posted that recent photo, I was like, his legs have not come back. No, his legs have not come back. So I was like, okay, if his legs haven't come back, is his upper body enough to be third place or fourth place? That's kind of where my mind is. And if, yeah. in Bonac, if you're watching this, I apologize, but we're just being completely subjective based on what we're what I'm seeing on. Yeah, see, and that's why I have guys like Breton and Kuklo ahead of them, I think. But it's yeah, it's tough. But that's what I'm wondering. Is this a show kind of like? Remember in Tampa, uh, Roly showed up and Roly wasn't the yeah. same Roly, and all of a sudden everybody kind of pulled ahead of him. Or Cedric at that yeah. last year came ninth and didn't yeah. show up. So this is what I'm wondering. Is this a show where yeah. Bonac maybe doesn't redeem himself and kind of some of the newer guys like Samson, Regan, think- maybe Justin, maybe they pull ahead of him? Highly, highly possible and probable, yes. If it's not now, it'll be within the next year or two, yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to fucking go out on a limb. I don't care. So Curry, Wilkin, Kuklo. I'm going to go Justin because... You know, you can't disrespect eighth or ninth at the Olympia. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, he looks um, good. He looks good. So Curry, Wilkin, Kuklo, Justin. I'm gonna go Regan. I'm gonna go Samson. 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 Bonac. Samson. Regan. Sam, what do we Sam. thinking? Akeem's gonna show up. Like, I mean, Akeem's been six. Oh, yeah, if Akeem shows up. Say. He's jumping the gun. Yeah, all our fucking yeah, picks go. All our picks go in the garbage if Akeem shows up in shape. He's well, honestly, he's in, if, he, if he's in true shape, then wait, Brandon's got a problem. I, I Akeem, wait, I, Akeem I still don't think, leave? I still don't think, I agree with that. Wait, 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 wait. I don't think Akeem can beat Brett after seeing Brett's photo. <laughs> no, but I still think the highest Akeem if, Akeem, can get, if Akeem is peeled, you think he'll beat Brett? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it's tough. I think he will get Imagine, imagine an Akeem, money. yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. He'll you get put my, Akeem. 100 percent dialed in. He's a fucking that next to Brandon. Come on, bro. I don't see I think it. Brett's a little too detailed, but I mean it's the thing is Akeem is just always gonna lose a lot of no matter how hard he is from the front, his back just is not super, super detailed. That's where that's but where I, I that's what I think. I think he's one of those guys is either gonna be in the top two or he's gonna be ninth. Well, no, no, just, but wait a minute. I honestly, I honestly let, hate go ahead. Let's not play that game for a second. Let's play this game. Let's say he's hundred percent. Does he beat Brett? No, I don't think so either. Well, it depends how you look at it. I don't think he beats Steve either. I think if he's 100%, he's fourth. Well, he already. I might be able to say that too. But I also think Steve has an issue with his back sometimes. So I might think that Akeem could pull ahead of Steve potentially. I feel well, like, yeah. I feel like Brett, okay. I feel like Brett is too complete. Like, yes, he's not is. really lacking anything. Brett it's, will it's come in. I know out for of this a world. fact. I know for a fact Brett will come in full. Watch, yeah, watching Brett pose yesterday, he has zero bad shots. Like, there's not one shot where you're like, man, it's not great. They're all good. Every single shot. I'm, I'm just okay. saying, if Akeem shows up like we've never seen him before, I well, if his back shape. is if his back is peeled, yeah, his back that's what I mean. Peeled, he like, could he could be second for sure. Yes, right. That's my point being. Like, we have never seen. Oh well, yeah, that's what I'm. Well, I guess I guess when I said 100, percent I kind of meant like his sixth place at the Olympia. No, no, no. no. I mean, like, like the best I've seen. No, I'm, like he just blows everyone out the door. But okay, yeah, okay, you're right. If that happens, sure. But I think realistically, I don't think his back. But if, all if he if he comes in how he looked at the Olympia when he got sixth, I do think Brad will be that. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Huh? Crazy. We only got two weeks to go. I know. I'm so know, excited. Bro. Who's all going? Brett, Ben, you're obviously going to be there. Ian, are you coming? I'm not. Why? Nick's going to be there. Oh, I don't really have anything to do other than watch. You have to hang out with us. What are you talking about? Chris is going, going right. Ryan. You got shit to do, man. You're like commentating and like stuff, and like Nick's yeah. got a Celsius booth. I mean, like, what the fuck am I gonna do? Walk around and jerk off in the hotel room? Like, bro, let's hang out. Ben's so there. You fucking guys. I'm, I'm hanging. I'm not doing shit. I'm Melissa. just hanging and trading. What? Are you coming to the Arnold? No, I have to pee in a cup every day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she, can't, she can't leave the state. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> all right well uh, okay. we're airing all our dirty shit now this is fucking great <laughs> um so you're not coming I'm just, I'm, you're not coming because melissa's not coming that's why you're not coming no no no, no not at all can do whatever you want. i thought about it but like, i didn't julian, say it was your fault melissa i just said i know ian and ian likes to be with you all the time oh no julian oh wanted, sweet yeah i mean julian's down here so i thought about it. i'm like yeah do you want to go and we're kind of like Meh, you know bring like, bring julian and we'll all fucking hang out whenever we can and train and train and okay no, talk to julian. actually no your mother's coming down not then be, yes she is when is she 
She said she'll be here for the Arnold because she's like, Oh, yeah, you're right. My mom's bring coming. Your, to bring your mom to the Arnold. Oh. <laughs> my mom's, uh, was my mom at the Arnold this year? No, but she's no. trying to escape the cold weather. Yeah. She's leaving Canada to come to Florida weather. She just want to go to back Just to tell Florida her to come the week after. We're all going to be together. I'll figure it out. Let me figure it out. Figure it out. Guys, I, going too, coming, right? I know she's coming for like four days and then she, her and her husband are like doing stuff on their own for like a week and yeah. then she's coming back. So if that time where she's not here is in the middle, then yeah. I can make a work. We're literally all going to be there except for James, unfortunately, and Roman. Yeah, guy, yeah. guy's going, right? Yeah, guy goes everywhere. Justin's going to be, Justin Shire's going to be there too. Where are you staying? Are you guys all staying in the same place? I'm at the host hotel. I'm staying at the hotel that's like walking distance from the powerhouse. Are you at the host hotel or no? Yeah. Me, uh, Nick. I think that's the one, yeah. The Hilton, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. That's I, right. I need a kitchen, no? I, so, I have a kitchen. I have a kitchen. Not a, So you must be at the Residence Inn, no? Yeah. You're probably it might be the Residence Inn then, yeah. The Residence Inn is just down the street. I could stay at the Residence Inn, but... But I'm literally walking distance from the powerhouse, so I figured yeah. I could get a workout in whenever. Yeah. Okay. Book your room tonight. I'll 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 do some logistical work. Yes. We'll get really drunk Saturday night. <laughs> oh, man, we can have fight. Can have a cool it is fight. In <laughs> you look like in this fight. Yeah, the UFC's on. We'll get drunk and watch UFC. It'll be fun. We'll, we'll okay, YouTube. Let, let, we'll YouTube yeah, the whole thing. Let me figure it out. Okay. <laughs> oh, that would be an epic video. Yeah, we'll YouTube yeah. the whole thing. We'll get fucking. We'll get hey, the bar. Last, we'll get in a bar time, fight. Ben will beat up. No, everybody. no, no. Last time I was uh, in Ohio for the Arnold after. Everything was done. We watched John Jones fight in the bar in the Hilton, and I watched it on Randy Couture's phone. So, oh, I remember you told me that. That's right. That's yeah. So maybe Randy will be there again. I'll DM him. Does it make? I'll, you call, feel... I'll do. I'll do what Guy does and Facetime him. <laughs> Facetime. Does it make you feel special that you watched Randy Couture's phone? I watched it without him knowing. I was over his shoulder. I think it was. And then, and then, I thought and you then, watched it with him. Meanwhile, you're like, no, no, wait, what? no. I, I was doing this, and then he noticed and was like, "Oh, grab a chair." And oh, then, well, that's but, cool. So I was. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised he wasn't like, "Fuck off, get out of here." I, I was kind of expecting it. I was like that. All right. Yeah, me and Ben for sure. If, and Nick, I don't know. You watch UFC or no? No, but I mean, I'll come watch. All right. So for sure, UFC Saturday night. Okay. Who are you looking are we, at? Can we I'm looking work at out? everybody. I'm looking at everybody. I'm, I'm expecting can everybody. You're looking at Nick, so I don't know. I am looking at Nick. Okay. Can we get? A, can we work out first? Well, it's <laughs> fucking at night, man. UFC's oh, at night. Yeah. It's like so we're it's gonna like, work out. It's like ten o'clock. Yes, yeah. we're gonna work out. We'll, well work you out. guys are gonna work out. Right. You don't, you you don't want to work out? out? I'm gonna be commentating, probably studying all oh, yeah. day long, so I don't fuck yeah. up. I'll the whole be. Thing. I'm. I'm. I'm eight weeks out at the Arnold, so I'm training. Yeah, I'm gonna train. I'm going to be in my room going over all the names and backgrounds. I mean, I'm literally only coming down there to hang out and train. So like someone better train. Yeah. They're all, they're all going to train. And Justin's going to, Justin's going to be okay, there. Good. He's going to train. We're all, we're all um, did you guys know you had good genetics before you started lifting? Didn't care. Didn't know. Didn't care. Yeah. I didn't that was know. Really a thing back then. Do you think when we started bodybuilding, did we talk about that? No, I didn't. When I, I started bodybuilding, I literally just, I kind of started for fun. And yeah, I but like, like I, when I started bodybuilding, I literally, I don't, literally didn't think there was like good genetics, bad genetics, care what my genetics I, were. I literally just started lifting weights. Yeah, I just, I, I, I agree. There, like, there was almost no, there was like no awareness of yeah the fact that there was a genetic way component. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, but I didn't. I wasn't even. It wasn't like holding me back, thinking no, I couldn't. You know? Yeah, like I never looked at like Kevin Lavroni. Was like, oh man, I don't have Kevin Lavroni's genetics. Maybe I shouldn't do this. No, but I think that's it, it, seems more, it seems more relevant now. Or I was just, I was just going to say, but that's relevant. part of what you were talking about earlier, Ian. Like the more education we have, the more people know what to yeah. look for. So they're like, maybe it's we've taught people that like these guys have superior genetics, and so all these other guys who are just starting out are like, maybe I don't have that guy's genetics. But they never talked about that in Flex Magazine or like, or like, like who cares? Like, why does it matter? You know? Well. This is this is not to be fucking cheesy, but that's why I always say sacrifice without regret because you're gonna do it because you love it. It's not because you're yeah, trying to you're is. not trying to I agree. You're not trying to guess the end point. You're gonna do it no, for the then, journey. Yeah, and, and if not, it, if you love it and you and you do well, then that's that's great, but that's not the the point, you know. Yeah, but yeah, how many people do how many people do you know, or maybe you don't know them, how many people do you see that are competing only to compete? Oh, now that's very more now very, than ever. Yeah, that, that's now. what I mean. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's almost crazy. everyone. But I, I think that's partially because of social media, right? Because people see these guys who are really popular with really good physiques, and they're like, yeah. "If I can't get like that, then I don't want to bother putting in the time." They want to yeah. look like the guy. They don't want to love training, right? I love the fact it takes a long time. 
No, 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 I know. But what I'm trying to say like, is like, do you know what I mean? Like what I'm trying imagine to imagine if it like, happened quick, too quick. And you'd be like, this is boring. What I'm trying to say is we love to work out, whereas they want yeah. to look like the end product. Yes. Well, they're that, not that's like, what I mean. Yeah. They, they want to, they want to, they, they want the payoff, but we actually enjoy the whole process of it. Yes. Like if somebody could snap their fingers, right? If somebody said to me when I was 20, well, I mean, obviously you're going to want to, but so yeah. if you snap your fingers and erase all of the training and just look like a pro, you know, it's great. I would do it. But when I think about all the shit I went through to get to the pro level, I'm like, I love that shit. Like there was a lot of shit I learned about myself in that time. hundred percent. Yeah. So it's like, if you, I guess that's why I always say, if you're not doing bodybuilding fully, you're not committed to it, you're missing out because there's a lot of shit you learn along the way when you're committed. So if you're trying just to get to the end and you're not worried about all the things you got to take to get there and you're not enjoying the thing, then you're missing out on all the good parts of it. If you like, I had a friend like that. He worked out with us for like a year and a half. He just wanted to look great. He didn't actually yeah. like, he was actually annoyed to go to the gym. He we would have to like make him come with us. And he fell off eventually. After like a year and a half, he stopped coming. But that's because all he wanted was to look like the end product. He didn't actually love coming. Yeah, people like that, one, have either they can't stick to it long term or two, they do stick to it long term. But there's a very limited ceiling of progression because they're never willing to push themselves into a realm of discomfort because it's just not like I don't care about it enough to feel that way. You know, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, you have to be more invested in it than just the look generally, um, you know, to want to put your put yourself into like the depths of training that you know, good level pro bodybuilders are putting themselves into 90% plus, you know? Plus, I'll, I'll also say this, part of the enjoyment of bodybuilding is seeing as if you can overcome your genetics. Yeah. Like when I started out, I just posted a picture today of myself on the very first day I started. Yeah. If you look at that photo, you can see my obliques are already bigger. Like I could already tell my stomach was never going to be small, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like part of the challenge of bodybuilding is can I overcome see, my- This is my, the thing my small shoulders or my thick waist or my, it's not like I'm looking and going, well, I got everything. It's perfect. I might as well do it. No, but see, this is the difference where we would say we want to improve this. Like say me, when I started off bodybuilding and still even to this day, my chest has been a weak point. I knew that from when I started, when I was a young kid, I was just like super pigeon chested, like little kid, you know? Mm. And I was just like, well, I need to build my chest. I need to work out to build my chest. I wouldn't send a picture of my chest or be like, well, I just have bad chest genetics, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, or send, yeah. it to a, send it to a pro bodybuilder and be like, Hey, do you think I have a good enough chest genetics to go pro? Like, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. care. I just knew if I work and I train and I build the chest, it will eventually grow. You know, right. it may not be tomorrow. It might be in five years, 10 years, 20 years, but I know that if I work it out, it will grow. You know, It'll it's, grow, funny. Yeah. it's funny because people are asking that stuff. I want to know what the, if the follow-up is like, let's say somebody messaged me and says, do I have I, the genetics? I ask this back to people all the time. I'm just wondering, time. like, if I say no to them, are they just going to stop going to the gym? <laughs> I I had someone ask me the other day and I just said it I shouldn't asked matter. The same thing. Yeah. It yeah. shouldn't matter. It doesn't matter why. I said it doesn't matter why yeah. I think. Just yeah. go train. I yeah. literally ask people this and be like, okay, so if I tell you you don't have the genetics, are you just gonna stop? And they're like, well, no, but I'm like, okay, so then why does it matter? It doesn't like, matter. Well, I just want to know. But I'm like, what? So are you gonna train your chest any harder or less hard, depending on what I yeah. say? Yeah. Because it shouldn't it shouldn't be swayed like that. You should always be trying to train your chest as hard as you can, you know? Like what is what does it matter if I if I say you don't have good chest genetics? Are you just going to use that as a crutch for the rest of your life now because your chest is subpar? You know, honestly, yeah. the only way my honestly. chest sucks. I don't say I have bad chest genetics. Like, I mean, who fucking cares? You know, I'll tell people watching this: the only way we could see if somebody had bad genetics, like us four here, or I'll speak for myself. If you send me a photo and you literally have the most narrow shoulders I've ever seen and the widest hips I've ever seen, I'm talking bones. <laughs> I'm talking bones, not fat. If you <laughs> yeah. have shoulders like this and you're, you're built like, like a this, triangle, yeah, yeah, if you're built like a pair. <laughs> Then, oh, yeah, like a pair. Yeah. Then I'll say, yeah, you probably don't have the genetics like for bodybuilding. Yeah. But other than that, like other than getting that, we don't know, and you don't know until you put the fucking muscle on, right? Like nobody could tell you you have good or bad genetics until you actually try and do it. That's the beauty of bodybuilding is nobody fucking knows. You have to just put in the time. Yeah. Okay. So fuck those people. Don't ask us. Like, that, that. Going back to that, like I have to ask them to other people. Like is, and I know we just said too you know, like we enjoy the process, but like, think of how many fun things are there in the process that like these people could be missing out on. Like, I mean, all the PRs and like lifting, like, you know, getting yeah. stronger, like all these strength yes. goals, like seeing those changes in your physique and knowing that like you worked for it. Like that's so much more rewarding, you know? That's rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like if you said, yeah, you don't have the genetics. You're still, there's still so much reward in doing it anyway. I mean, like, it's like this, 
Say, say if you could ask a genie to just give you an Olympia medal, like you didn't do the work, you didn't do anything and just say, I'll snap my fingers. You in the record books now have won Olympia, but you'll wake up the next day, the exact same. Would you feel any type of reward or gratitude towards that Olympia? And you'd be like, no, I didn't earn it. This no, is mine. Like, I, I, would take it. It would I would take it. I would take it just to be in the record books. Well, you take it to be in the record book, but I'm <laughs> saying in terms of like the feeling of accomplishment from it would be almost none, you know? No, I wouldn't take it over my 20 year career. No. No. But I mean, I'm saying it would mean it would feel like almost nothing, you know. It that's right. That's why I'm saying I wouldn't take it because it it yeah. wouldn't give me any satisfaction, right? None. It would yeah. give you none, like literally yeah. none. Well, well, use me as an example then, Fred. I like be critical and honest. Yeah, I don't have the genetics to be a pro bodybuilder or, or a top pro, but I still fucking love doing this shit every day in day yeah. out, and I've been doing it for 15, 16 years, as in like truly trying to put on muscle. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Well, we just had this it conversation because you were thinking like, should I compete again? Should I not compete again? And I was like, whether you compete again or not, you're still a bodybuilder because you love bodybuilding, you love training. So yeah. whether you have the genetics or not, same answer. And it's it's like, good that Ben said that because there was, if not, there would have been a hundred people saying, well, it's easy for you guys to say you're all successful pro bodybuilders. That's right. like, no, 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 that's it's right. easy to say when you already have good genetics, but it's like, well, right. no, not everyone with even the, not the best genetics still think this way, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I mean, and look, and there's also been some people that have, you know, been able to scrounge together a physique that's gone. Like, I mean, think of someone like Josh Wade. Does, do we look at Josh Wade when he was competing and be like, that's a, a good genetic physique? Like, yeah. fuck no, you yeah. know? Yeah. But like, he was just like an old dude that kept grinding for 40 years and got enough muscle, grainy old muscle in there to, yeah. you know, battle it out in some pro shows, you know? No, there's definitely bodybuilders don't have optimal no. genetics. Like even Guy, I don't, I think Guy has good genetics, but he always says he doesn't have good genetics. Mm -hmm. and he fucking seven pro fucking wins so yeah you know i mean if you same thing if you look at branch like branch himself will say i don't have i mean i again i disagree with no, him but he, I just, uh, there, but, yeah. but he, but he but bonkers, I, I disagree yeah. with it but he yeah. will say yes i didn't have the prettiest physique and he still was second at the olympia so yeah. nobody well, i'll agree with him i'll agree with it. it wasn't pretty yeah that's what he said. That's not like all genetics. Control. That's not ge that's not having bad genetics. I know it's bad genetics in that one area. I get one it. area. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you be if when you began training like a bodybuilder, you ate perfect at the start. How much faster do you think you could have become a top pro? Like if Patrick, Zero. if your Patrick was your coach at 18 years old and you did everything he said, you don't think it would have been any faster, Ian? No. But you were very serious from the start. You said. Yeah, I don't think it would. I, th I think it might have expedited the process by a year. Like, I mean, maybe at maybe at best. And maybe I would have been so, you know, uh, like distasteful and like over bodybuilding by that point from living it so regimented in that sense for so long from a young age. Maybe I would be behind, you know? Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Like, when I look back at my, I was thinking this today. Wow. When I look back at my career, I don't regret anything, but I'm, I'm able to. Uh, objectively look at it and think if I did have a coach like Patrick from 20, I probably, and I was able to do everything he said and ignored my life. Mm -hmm. I probably would have turned pro at 25. I probably would have been a top Olympian by 30. Yeah. See, I so, mean, I did pro turn pro at 23, but I also started working with good coaches, like pretty yeah. young, you know, like I was working with like, you know, Greg, you said, who was is still, yeah. you know, good. I mean, he's it's a good not coach. Like, yeah. He's a good coach. Not a scrum coach by any stretch, you know, no, I worked a good coach. Dennis right after that, Matt, like, I mean, you know, I've, I've worked with coaches almost my entire bodybuilding career right i have too i think the difference between me and you is i i enjoyed my life for yeah. for a lot of my 20s and then i got yeah, see, serious I, 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 I went super super hard until like 19 and then i stopped partying cold turkey you know yeah 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 ben um i'm not a top pro so fuck knows <laughs> <laughs> ian you both um, uh, no I, I, okay i will say this since especially because i'm going to talk about patrick like I've improved tremendously since starting with him. So undoubtedly, if I had him from 15 years ago, for sure, I'd be ahead of where I'm at right now. Oh, can I? Okay. Nick, you want to answer the question that I want to touch on one comment I saw that really bothered me? Go ahead, yeah. Nick. Do you, have you, you've always been pretty serious, right? I've literally been serious since I was like 17 years old. Well, now we have the, the proof of what that looks like. Yeah, I, I no. What I mean is, I don't mean I wasn't serious. I just meant a lot. Sometimes the effort for for and again talking about my genetics, for my genetic uh, predisposition, the approach wasn't 
correct i needed to be a little oh, more I see. well when i say serious i don't mean i wasn't serious i guess i just i, I don't know how to put it i, I did it. my party i did my party when i was in high school me too yeah yeah and then once once i graduated high school that's when i started competing yeah it's weird i don't want to say i didn't live my life for it but i guess i i enjoyed a few saturday nights i guess yeah. I was just that guy. I would like, I would still go out every single week. I just never drank. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I would still go out every Friday, Saturday to the bar, like with my buddies and I just like drink water and like chill and like, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I saw a couple comments comments uh, on the last video we did about Nathan. And I still think people are a little confused about contracts and I kind of wanted to touch on it. Do you think that's shit? Should we just skip it? Well, depends. What do you want to touch on? Well, somebody made a comment about Nathan and Ben. And like, how could you let Nathan go and still have Ben? Sorry, Ben, but I want to bring it up because it's fucking annoying. I don't see the the carry over here. That was my that was my answer to him. Is one has nothing Uh, to do with not one has nothing to do with the other. Uh, Are they are they not assuming by status that Nathan would have been doing better than me from a business stance? Regardless, you're following. No, no, but I'm saying that's that's probably a perception. That's probably yeah. It's probably right. it's a, sure. it, it, no, I think what they're thinking is one is a top Olympian and one. Does, what he said is Ben doesn't even compete, so I think he's looking at his competitor. So, so the reason oh. I the reason I want to bring it up is not just to flame the guy, but the reason was to bring it up was to further explain how contracts work. So I'll just one more time, there are a number of different ways to have a contract. You can have, you can sign somebody because they're a coach. You can sign somebody because they're an Olympian. You can sign somebody because they're a, an influencer. You can sign somebody because they're an ambassador. You can, is there any other or missing? combination of these. Or some yeah. combination of them all, right? But there are a number of different contracts. Not all contracts are equal and not all people are brought onto a team for the same reason. So whether Ben is on the team and Nathan isn't, or Justin is on the team and Brett isn't or whatever, they're all on the team for a different reason. They're not all the same. So that's... I want to clarify that first of all, then I also want to clarify performance-based contracts are almost the same as commission-based contracts because your performance is measured by your commission. So there's not really a difference in saying performance-based or commission-based. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of one and the same. Well, uh, okay, wait, let me rephrase. There is performance and sales, which is the same as commission. And then there's performance on stage, right? Sure. And then, and then, so, and then there's salary based and then there's ambassador, right? Which doesn't, usually ambassadors don't get paid. They might get supplements and that's it. You have, when I say salary based, I'm talking about a guaranteed salary that doesn't affect, it doesn't matter where you place, doesn't matter what your sales are, doesn't matter uh, anything else. When I say a salary contract, I'm talking about a guaranteed salary that you got, whether you were last place at the Olympia or first place at the Olympia, whether you sold $50,000 a month worth of product or $5,000 a month worth of product. Correct with you guys? You guys have salary-based contracts, right? Okay. So just one more time for the people in the very back, Nathan had a salary-based contract, guaranteed money, okay? Not a commission-based contract, not a performance-based contract. It was salary-based with incentives in commission but he had salary base a guaranteed amount he was getting every month which is the same as what i have yes which that's, is the same as same what, what same what, Nate, same what ben has same what nick has had in the past or is going to have with his next with his next that's what i mean that's like, what i mean nathan Nate, i mean nathan's the the number was different but nathan and i had the same contract essentially but without the, the what i'm saying is people are people are confusing performance base meaning like you get paid based on how much sales you bring in. Mm -hmm. We don't do those contracts here. You get a commission based on what sales you bring in. You're you're rewarded for your sales. Yes, but every athlete has a guaranteed salary. Okay? So I just want to make that very clear. Nathan's contract was salary based. Yes, he was getting monthly salary. Yes. Yes. So let's just- Plus a monthly monthly commission and whatever that was. Plus a monthly commission, plus bonuses, which I paid a lot of. (laughs) So- Let's, uh, yeah, I just want to put this to rest finally, because people keep making assumptions and can well, really assume I don't, I don't understand. Sorry. I'm, I'm just, I keep hearing this shit. Like, uh, they think they're confusing performance-based with salary. 
and commission. Yeah. And they're saying they're basically assuming that performance based, meaning if he sold X amount of dollars, he would get paid X amount of dollars. Ah, okay. And that's not what the contract is. That's not what I've never done that kind of contract. Mm -hmm. The contract is you get a salary, that's your pay every month. And then you have a commission and you'll yeah, get this commission based on your sales. Commission on top right. Of that, yeah. And in my world, if your salary is always greater than your commission, then you have a salary based contract. Yes. Right. That's, that's just what it is. So I just had to clarify that one more time because certain people keep saying things that don't make any fucking sense. So I have to clarify again for the masses. So let's move on from that now. Uh, and that is that. Well, it's just like, look, like this thing, yeah, keeps, this thing keeps being brought up and I'm like, well, yeah, I know. It's like, fuck man. Like, you know, I think, I think Nick understands. <laughs> I understand greatly, Fuad. <laughs> oh, and Ian did understand from a few months back. Um, one, one last thing, because I also heard this on, I have to say it just because I heard this on another channel. I don't have to fucking make a statement if I cut an employee or fire someone from my team. I don't have to make a statement. But you I did. Don't, I don't have to. I did. <laughs> out of out of out of i no 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 i didn't because people are like we want the reason we we need to know and i'm like you don't need to fucking know if i no. fire if i fire a secretary i don't have to fucking give a press release if yeah. i if i let go of an athlete i don't have to give a press release this is bodybuilding i got cut from muscle tech they didn't do a fucking ad oh well no. we cut we cut foo ad because we were making room for phil heath and we wanted to pay phil a million dollars so we let go of there's, Fu. there's like, a difference between there's a difference between the privilege of ha having information put out there versus what you're entitled to know. And do you know how much? And that, wait a minute. Sorry. How much muscle tech paid Phil back then? Do you know? So, no, sorry for one second. And that's the difference, Ian. Right. I feel like it's my right, and I'm being inform. I'm informing our fault, my fault, hostile followers that, out of respect, hey, Nathan's no longer with the team. I want to let you guys sure. know, blah blah blah. And there's a difference between saying this is why and this is like this there's a certain things that are yeah. out of respect are private and should remain private and if yeah. nathan wants to talk about him that's that's nathan's, prerogative. that's nathan's prerogative it's not my job or duty no, or any to talk even if me and even if nathan wasn't a friend no but this is a thing with with social media nowadays is that people think that they or have the right to all your information. That's right. It's a that's right. We have a right to know. It's like they're entitled to it. That's what I mean. They, they don't know any, absolutely anything about me. And they can say, well, you know, you put your life out there on social media. We know about these contracts, blah, blah, blah. You announced that you're leaving. So we want to know why. It's like, but you you don't, it's not really any of your business. But you that's know? not your right. You're right. I told you what I want to tell you. I don't have yes. to tell you anymore. You didn't even have to tell them that, to be honest. That's, that's, that's what, what my point. That's what my yeah. point was. It was a privilege for them to get some information from yes. you. They're not entitled to it all. No, yeah. they're There's, entitled to what you. What, they're entitled to what you decide to give them. Nothing more, nothing less, and that's it. You know. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Okay. Do you know how much Phil was getting paid? Uh, no, I don't actually. I know it was a lot of money though because they cut thirteen guys. I wonder what thirteen. It was like it, it was like 30, so many 30, 40 k a month. Like, what do you think they were paying him? Thirty k. Oh, I heard it was over five. Over five? Over 500, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I heard. I, mean, I can believe it. I mean, yeah, a big company like Muscle But think about it. If they let go of 13 guys and every guy was getting paid 50 grand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, like, they let go of me and Cedric and Leo Ingram and, like, just the fucking whole like shitload of people. I think yeah. I think Johnny Jackson got lost in that deal, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we all kind of, like, they're like, Phil Heath's here. Everybody fucking get lost. How'd that work out for them? <laughs> they didn't do they didn't do 13 press releases, that's for sure. They were just like, see you later. Oh. You know what's funny? There was not even like a warning. They just called me one day, and I'm pretty sure this is how it happened with everybody. They this is how this industry works, and that's all there is. Like they just called me one day, they're like, Look, we're not renewing your contract at the end of this month. It was only literally like two or three weeks left on my contract. They're not we're not really renewing your contract this month. Sorry. We hope wish the best. Bruh. But, yeah, <laughs> bro. There's none of this, none of this, none of this shit that people see online now. Like, oh, they're friends and they're not friends, and there's drama and not drama, and there's press releases and it, no, they're like, good luck Yo, finding this. Back, th back then, like Muscle Tech was like, like Big Corp, you know, like oh yeah, like oh, yeah. Mr. Big Farm Corp, Walmart. Yeah. Like <laughs> they're just like some guy calls you from their HR with like yeah. sixteen thousand people, yeah. and he's like, 
hey there, uh, Fuad Ab- Abayad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're fire, motherfucker, you know? Yeah. Like- <laughs> <laughs> but it was like that with SciTech too. SciTech, yeah. got, SciTech was very, very bodybuilding based. These these behemoths that like are so in, like impersonal are kind of gone. No, now. no, but I I have to give SciTech respect. So <laughs> they had they were very very personable and very bodybuilding centric. And then uh, one of these venture groups came in and yeah. bought them out. Bought them, I remember. Yeah. And then when that happened, they became very like it changed completely corporation like, yeah. and you didn't know anybody. And then they fired like everybody except like Cedric, I think. Yeah, so, I would I would as an athlete, I would fucking hate working for a company like that. Like that was just like. Yeah big business like that and like it's like where you speak to some like fucking pleb in a suit you know from an office in fucking you know new it, york like, i don't want to do that shit you know it has its pros and its cons i have it to has its pros from a business standpoint no like from an athlete standpoint it has its pros in what aspect well when you're and uh, you know nick has to consider this too i mean well he's off when you're dealing with a giant like muscle tech right like you can have anything like they do things the right way, right? Uh, sorry, sorry, Ben. Uh, as you say, they do things the right way rather than on a whim and a casual, like, oh, we'll figure it out. That it's it's, it's sure. definitely it's more, a lot more business focus on it. Yeah. Listen, when you're yeah. dealing with when you're dealing with muscle tech, and I can attest to this because Summer was in marketing and research. When you're dealing with muscle tech, they have teams of people working like like marketing had a team of people for each product. It wasn't yeah. like wasn't like a team of people for all their products. It was like for each. they had a team of people for vitamins, a team of people for fat burners, a team of people for pump products. Like, so it's like you, so everything, you every, everything is pure. blend under dose products. <laughs> Regardless of that. Wow. I'm just saying as an athlete though, everything is very planned out. You're doing a photo shoot at this time, at this place, yes. we're going to send a box of goods that you're going to have there ready for you. It's like, it was very, very, professional as professional could be right and that's one of the benefits when you're an athlete of being with like a fucking hundred million dollar company because everything's set for you but then you lose the ability well, to call relations to be me more than that you know well you just like look i'll give i'll use ian as example right or ben even like you guys are friends with the owners of your company so ben can pick up the phone and call me and say i like oversized shirts i want oversized shirts yeah. and then a year later, we have oversized shirts. It took me a little longer, but I got it done. Yeah. I was <laughs> so, and Ian, the same goes for you. You could probably call Matt and be like, I think we should do this. And he'll consider it. Yeah. So is a, it's kind of like the pros and cons. Because I could never call somebody at Muscle Tech and be like, hey, can we do this thing? And they'd be like, fuck off. Go yeah. stand, at a, stand at a booth somewhere. Yeah. Right? It's like, so, yo, we're paying out like 600K in salary. We're staying at a booth. Six people at 100K a year to figure this out. <laughs> fuck you, buddy. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so there's pros and cons to both i guess it just depends what you like what you like yeah. the most yeah if you like that like you don't really want to deal with people and you just want to be like show up here 10 p.m do your thing blah 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 get your paycheck promote the company as within your contract you that's know right. make a good amount of money then that's i think that's a great option but like yeah. you know obviously i mean it's just different i you know obviously when i was looking for new companies and like you know i talked to you and, and ron like these companies like you're a friend of mine like that's a yeah. selling point for me you know yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm yeah. here with like chris and matt and like and you know, these people here in Dom, it's like, these people are people I enjoy being around. Like, it's like, there's personal relationships to be built here. And that to me, I, I like a lot more, you know? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I agree with that. Ben, what do you think? Would you rather be with a monster? I mean, you were Redcon, right? But I guess even, you know, the yeah, even Redcon is pretty personal. No, no, no. Yeah, they, you were still they, personal well, with those def- guys. Yeah, but there was definitely a shift from when I first signed to right at the end. Well, because I think like they, they, were went, still, they, they went giant. I they, think they, they were really still growing. Grew. You were still growing when I was you first just, signed. That's what I mean. When I first yeah. signed, they really fucking grew. And once they moved to that office, that that big headquarters, it became such a large operation that it became. I mean, I, we were lucky because we were in before that happened. So like Luke and I big had connections. Yeah. We yeah, but then they were bringing athletes on that Aaron would never really have anything to do with. Like I remember talking to Aaron about my contract, and Rudy, I think, manager said, "Hey, no one talks. No one." They deal with me, not Aaron. You, say, yeah, you yeah, jump yeah. the queue. But the way they operate, I mean, I'm sure for his like higher up guys, he's a bit more hands-on. Do you, think, do you think you were responsible for Redcon's growth? I think I'm owed a lot of money. <laughs> um, at least a Rolls Royce. <laughs> um, 
All right. How would you? Yeah, undervalued everywhere I go. Put it that way for that. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was waiting. <laughs> Give the pay increase. Come on. Uh, we've already discussed it. He's going to be fine. <laughs> Ben's, Ben's going to be. Ben gets to do whatever the fuck he wants. Okay. Don't listen to him. He literally doesn't have to do anything. He does nothing. I wish I'd known that. I wish I'd known that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been, I'd have been way lazier. Uh, do you guys ever have a mind about when you first started taking PEDs, like that you ain't be, you ain't be big anymore without them, or that once you started, you won't stop? What? Come again, English. And- <laughs> so, do you ever think about that when that now that when you started PEDs that you would never be big without them, or what? I guess that's what he's saying. Yeah. Or what's the second? Or, or that once you or that once you started, you won't stop. Uh. I don't think at the beginning you really think of either of those things, but I still don't really think of either of those things. Uh, Cause like when I stop them, I don't care to be big without them. Like, I don't care if I'm not competing as a pro bodybuilder, I don't care to look 300 pounds. Like it's, it's like the priority. Every you know? person that's been 300 pounds. Cause they got there. Say, I don't want to be this big. <laughs> that's the yeah, truth. It's that's only, true. it's only the 180 pound guy that was like, no, I'd be that way the whole time. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. we're all like, yo, I would love to be 180 right now. That probably yeah. feels so good. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 No. Um, Grass is always greener. I think, I don't know if I can't speak necessarily for Ben or Nick for sure. You guys can answer, but I know Ian said this before. I didn't start doing any gear until I started bodybuilding competitively. So Me too. I wasn't worried about like, how, how am I going to look when I stop doing gear? Because I figured I would be retired and I wouldn't care if I got smaller. Yeah. So just like you're also said, doing it, like you're also doing it for a purpose. It's like, yeah. Well, yeah. Once I'm done competing, like I have no reason. It's like, okay. Do people that drink coffee, the, the people that drink coffee every day, the first time they ever drink coffee say, shit, I might have a caffeine dependency and have to drink coffee the rest of my life after this. Like, no, it's like, if you just don't want to stop drinking coffee, stop drinking coffee. It's like, you know what I mean? I don't know, man. I love my coffee. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's the same, Ian. Yeah. No, I drink sure. coffee. Like, I'm just saying it's like coffee. when you start in a, a behavior like that, like if you're doing something to like give you energy from the caffeine yeah. or you're starting this, you know, steroids to make you big, it's like you're doing it because you want the morning energy. You don't think like, oh, in 20 years from now, am I going to yeah. never be able to stop yeah. drinking yeah. coffee True. in the morning? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Like, you don't think like that. It's like you just drink your goddamn coffee, man. Like, you know. True. Yeah, but, but I do go through stages where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to drink coffee for a yeah. period of time and we very also rare. go to stages where we're very yeah but i'm forced <laughs> to do that <laughs> that's forced yeah is 27 years too old to start bodybuilding when you have two herniated discs and when actually it's too late to, and when is it actually too too late to start bodybuilding if you're 27 with two herniated discs i'm gonna say i probably would not pursue being a top pro bodybuilder if you want to still train and do it recreationally and have fun with it safely then great um, but you're going to have a tough time safely moving to the upper echelons of bodybuilding. Agreed. I have two, I have two herniated discs from three years ago. And I Are have two. Okay I, and I, squ- I squatted 670 pounds yeah. on the weekend. I've never had a herniated disc, so I don't know uh, how bad I have I two herniated discs. I've had it for I, I had, seven I had, years. So I had, what I have, 10, 12 PRP injections in my back, and I was like off my feet for a pretty long time. I had to have I, a, I, I went and had those, you know, those traction beds. Yeah. I went through all of that. Like every day I would have to go and have traction. And, that's why and, I have yeah. my, uh, that's why I have my inversion table. This is the only other way to yeah. get like traction is to hang upside down. So, I mean, then, yeah. I mean, then I guess the only question would be is 27 too old. Well, I think if you see somebody like Brett, who's extremely serious and has put on a lot of muscle and he's only, he's 34 years old. I mean, and he just started a couple years ago. It depends on your genetics, really. I mean, if your yeah. genetics are made That's for this, true. like Justin Shire, Justin Shire is 34 years old. He just turned pro. Yeah. So I don't know. I think too late. I think too late is like 35. Cause then by the time you turn pro, you're 40. And then 40 is kind of like a. Yeah. 27 is still pretty young. Like, yeah. You know? Cause 40 is kind of the point where people yeah. start to go the other way. So yeah. you could do a few, you did four years real locked in, didn't compete, just put the size on. In four years, if you had the genetics to go with it, no, I don't. I'm not saying. Yeah, I'm saying 35. But then, you, if you turn pro by 40, then you're already like on the. No, downside. no, I'm saying for 27. Yeah. I'm saying the 27. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 27. Yeah. When, when, you slip discs, are, when you have slipped discs like that, is your chance of them reoccurring higher? Well, that's not that's not slipped. I'm herniated is when they actually then sorry. burst out. Herniated, as well. Yeah, sorry, whatever. So I mean, like I slipped is way better. Well, yeah, because um, 
they get inflamed, right, Ben? Like that's what happens to mine. Like they get inflamed and then you fucking can't move. Uh is that the same yeah, thing? Which is why, well, wait, answer me. This. Is it, a, it is a herniated disc the same as a bulge disc? No, a bulge is when it just like pushes out. A herniated means the inside, the pulpus inside actually comes out. It splits. The, yeah. the oh, disc I, actually tears open and the middle bit comes out. That's what I, I had. I had two bulge discs then. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Correct that's that, yeah. that, that's that's. I think that's a slip disc as well, right? I, I'm not off. sure, but I know that. Yeah. That that basically that basically is where it's just getting squished and it's pushing out like and hitting the nerve, squeezed out the back. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But what I had was herniated where it did that first, and then it stayed like that way, and then it's it, the, the the split. The disc actually like splits in the middle of the the soft bin. So what did this guy out. say he has? A uh, herniated disc. So yeah, that's, that's why I had I had that's why I had the two of those. And that's why I had to have the I did the um traction first and that allows the space for then you hope that the middle bit goes kind of get sucked back in to the disc. So if, is your chances the, of reoccurring in those spots higher now? Uh it's a good question. I would imagine so because it's almost a scar tissue, right? There's gonna be that weak. Wait, this is saying a herniated disc or a bulging disc. Is there a difference and how can you tell? So yeah. this to me is a bulge disc because it's not split. Right. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Look. Oh, yeah. See, it's like you, know, you yeah. see what I mean with the herniated, the, the middle bit actually get compressed. It actually over. splits through. Whereas a bulging disc is just more like squeezed in the wrong position. Herniated disc. Oh yeah. See, yeah. it shows there. It, it, it's basically disc. uh. Right here, right it's here, basically right here. the next. It's basically the next stage of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Disc, right. Okay. So I've had this. I, I've. I don't think I've ever had this. That's what I have. A thinning disc, degeneration, degenerative, normal disc. Okay. Yeah. So we we'll probably all have a version of one of these after oh, months. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Wadding and all that shit. No, you probably have something going on. No, no, Ian. I feel great. You're only 31. Just give us some time. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of other things that don't feel great, but my back feels good. My all elbows right. are different, but we'll do one last more fun one. And then we'll go. We didn't talk about sex or shit on this podcast. Well, you asked Nick how much his girlfriend and him were having sex. Yeah. And Nick you also was... asked if he's shit in front of her. So there's there's that. I guess, we, got... <laughs> I guess we kept our streak going. We covered the bases. We covered the bases. Uh, if you guys were cast in an old school Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, which movie would it be? And who would be, who would each cast member play? Oh my God. Blood sport. So, hard. so I think I would be Blood, Blood, sport. Blood sport and I would be Bolo Young because he's got a massive chest. And ben, I'd be, I'd be, ben, I'd be, the Asian belief. Ben would be the uh, the guy with the long hair and the bandana, the Van Damme's friend. The one that got fucked up? Yeah, that guy. And Ian would probably be Van Damme. I actually got called Bolo Young when I was a teenager playing football. That's just because you're Asian. Exactly. I know. I've, I know that. So what I be? I want to be Van Damme. <laughs> I'm well, looking he, up the movie. Let's see. All right. These are the characters. I haven't seen this movie in so long, I can barely remember. Wait, so Bolo Young's got that's uh, what, that's Bolo, Young, chest. Yeah, Bolo Young. Yeah, yeah. This is Bolo ben. Young's got a bandana on too. This Let's is Ben right here. Get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> um, wait, wait, wait. So, Fred, you're taking the Asian guy in a bandana because of the chest size. Yeah. Let me just... Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that fine. guy has a huge chest, eh? Yeah, he does. It's like a massive. I always yeah. remember. I remember that. So, who's this? Is this? Is this? Is this Ian? It looks like no, Brett. It's me. It looks like Brett. It could be Nick. This guy's too small to be you. Well, picture They're me small. Too small. They're all too small to be any of us. <laughs> um, Bola Young's pretty fucking huge. Okay. Uh... Who's this girl? Is that Melissa? <laughs> then that has to be Ian. Okay, sure. And that's Ben. This is bullshit. Who adds Forrest Whitaker, bottom right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. I like Forrest Whitaker. He's the cop in this one, but he's the understanding cop. Yeah. That's definitely not you. You're not understanding about it. I'm totally understanding. I would let you stay and fight, Ian. <laughs> would you let me stay and fight? I would let you stay and fight. What if it was a reckless decision? I would still do it. Or there's kickboxer. Who's Tom Poe? Kickboxer was enough. This guy looks like he is. I like kickboxer. <laughs> nice. Um. All right. There's not enough characters. 
Okay, do one more. All right, we'll finish one more. What's your favorite sitcom from like growing up? Just out of curiosity. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. is good. Cheers but I was older. But I was older. Like I guess I have to specify younger because Cheers. I was. Yeah, like, what was, was what was a sitcom like when you were growing up? Like when I was growing up, I watched like Who's the Boss, and like Family Ties. Okay, Family Ties. See what you guys won't know this, but Only Fools and Horses is a British. Oh, you might know because he's my. What's it called? Only 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 Fools and Horses is like a British institution of a sitcom. Yeah, I wouldn't know any it's, of those. Yeah. So Family Ties. The English, who's the boss? The and UK. I, the UK listeners will fucking light that up. We'll only that Fools one. Yeah. Horses, trust me. Yeah. Nick, you probably don't even know what Family Ties is, do you? Are you texting your girlfriend? Are you telling her you love her? I love you, Schmoopy. <laughs> He's on a plane, bro. Oh, okay. Schmoopy. Is that what you call your wife? Schmoopy? No, I just, it's a Seinfeld Schmoopy, episode. Schmoopy. It's a Seinfeld episode. Um, do you have pet names for her yet? Are you really pet like name? mushy? Are you really like a mushy fucking like boyfriend? <laughs> Yeah, you are, man. I can totally no. see it. You're a fucking bag of mush for sure. Total class of um, I am no bag of mush. You're for sure not hardcore with your girl. You're probably soft yeah. as fuck. Ask her. Okay. Yeah, why don't you get her on? Just do a one-on-one -on -one interview. <laughs> <laughs> what is Nick like? Please do that. Yeah. <laughs> Shay, you should, wait, you could do that for like every every person on the podcast. You could get their wife or girlfriend on. Yeah. And just, just talk about, yeah. That would be good. Get deep. What is your What does your first date look like, Nick? We went to the Cheesecake Factory. Oh, so is, there is there flowers? No. Do you Are you bringing flowers on a first date? Wait, wait. Do you pick her up or does she pick you up? Well, I picked her up from the airport. You picked her up from the airport and then you came home? Yeah. Banged up. sex. Banged up. It's sex. Yeah. And then you showered. And then you went to the Cheesecake Factory. That was your first date? Exactly <laughs> that. They kept, the, they kept the snake on them and then went to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it went. All right, so there's no flowers, <laughs> no flowers on the first date. Cheesecake Factory. Is there a movie yeah. after? No. Just Netflix. Cheesecake Factory and then home. Netflix. Netflix and chill. Okay. Do you do you bring flowers on the first date, Fuad? I brought flowers on my first date with Summer. It was Summer you did. Yeah. One where, one where, one flower. Where'd you guys meet? So like, Summer's a classy girl. Flower? Flowers. One flower. Rose. It, was it a rose? I don't remember if it was a rose. I don't remember what it's it like, was. Like, what other do you bring as a single flower, you know? I think it was a rose, but it wasn't one flower. It was one flower with, like, but it was, like, an arrangement of, with one flower. Oh, okay. With one okay. rose in it. Okay. I drove to Barry, which is five hours from Windsor. You know that, Ian. Yeah, yeah. Four, four and a half. You, and a half. you drove five hours for pussy. Holy well, shit. I didn't even get any. I drove, <sighs> I drove four and a half hours. And got met, no pussy. We met. We, we met. At a at a at one of the uh, rest stop. No, not at the rest stop. We met. <laughs> That's why you didn't get pushed. No <laughs> <My> bathroom. <laughs> Listen, we drove. I drove all the way there. We met in Barry uh, at a Milestones, I think. Milestones. Yeah. We had dinner at a Milestones. And you I, you came with. I flowers. gave her the flower when I saw her. So you brought it all the way from Ottawa. I brought. From, I, it's, I sat it in my passenger seat. Really? And I drove it all the way down the floor. The seat held on it. No. <laughs> Hey, the way you so, drive, you should have you should have so that thing down. We had dinner, and then I'm like, "Do you want to come back to Windsor with me?" It Did you chain smoke cigarettes going there because you were so nervous? Not five hour drive. <laughs> yes. Did, eh? You're such an For asshole. Sure. <laughs> so <laughs> this guy's so, just windows down, just like. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then uh, she said, "No, I'm not coming home with you." And then we had a coffee. And talked for a bit, and then I fucking drove all the way back home in the same day. Same day. You didn't get a hotel. No. See, that's just that's great. See, why that's didn't you spend the night in that? You should have driven up there. You should have driven up there, booked a hotel, and then you should have said, "Hey, do you want to come back to my hotel for night? It's not five fucking hours away." She'll but even if even if she didn't want to come back to the she hotel, then you'd be like, okay, we can hang back tomorrow. She wouldn't have. No, it's all right. That's what I. I just. Well, I mean, you're married to her now, so it obviously fucking worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just went, and that was. I don't. I don't want. Did she carry the flower with her into milestones? No, <laughs> no. We left it in the car. Left it in the truck. No. <laughs> um, I didn't want to like make any assumptions. Like I'm gonna yeah, stay yeah, another that's, day. That's what if the first date sucked and I didn't want to have a second date? I'd be like, no, but then you could have just slept there and gone home in the morning. You know? Nah. Yeah. I, just, I like driving. I was like, fuck it. You know what? Either she's gonna come with me home, or I'm gonna drive back by myself. I'll see her next week. 
Yeah. Wait, so, in what world would she follow you home for five fucking not hours? Not follow me. I was going to just bring her with me. Well, so you're going to kidnap her? Like, take the, the <laughs> home and then drive her back to the next Look, day. man, it wasn't well thought out, all right? I was going to come for dinner. <laughs> then you're going to send her thing. on a greyhound the next day. I'm getting fucking, <laughs> fucking <laughs> hounded right now for my $14.99. Fucking, yeah. $14.99. I'm getting for fucking screwed greyhound. right now for my 15 year old relationship. Wait. Imagine though, imagine if she'd gone, yeah, okay, you drive her back, you bang her, you, you put her on a bus on the way home. That would be bus, fucking yeah. not even a train or a plane. Yeah, but a see, if she would have, this is the thing, if she would have came with me and I banged her, want her home, you know, then I would have sent her on a bus because I probably wouldn't have wanted her back. That's true. It you worked out because like, you could at least do like economy via rail, you know, it, it worked out because she said <laughs> yeah. no. That's why it worked out. So she said no. I went home and then we met the next week at a party. Same thing. I drove to Guelph to see her and then drove back the next day. And then the third week she came to my house and stayed the weekend. Oh, okay. See? Yeah. I had to put in a little work. Did but... you bring flowers every time? No. Just the first time. Just the first time? Yeah. Getting lazy. For, it, was a, it was flowers the first time, condom the second, right? Yeah. No, no, no. Condom no. the third time then. No, third maybe, time. maybe the third time, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was good. So, okay, so no flowers, just Cheesecake Factory. What'd you and your wife do for Valentine's Day? Oh, me and my wife? Nothing. I got her a spa. I got her a spa day. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's good. We don't really, I don't know, man. After 15 years, we don't. Oh, yeah, no. I wasn't expecting you to say I bought her a trip to fucking Hawaii. No. I was just like, you know. Last year, I, last year, I did some flowers. This year, I was like, you know what? Fucking flowers are just, I feel like flowers suck because they just die and like they yeah. don't do anything. I don't like flowers. Yeah, but they but that's the problem. You think they suck, she doesn't. Yeah, yeah but she liked her, her. she liked her she liked her spa treatment a lot more than fucking flowers, I'll tell you that. Yeah, spa treatment's good. Yeah. So I like I like a spa. spa? Yeah. Mm. What did you get your girl for Valentine's Day? Ian? A ba- a fancy bag. Oh, you went all out with the money. Well, I knew she wanted this bag specifically, so I just got the bag. When's her birthday? December. See, you have to see my wife's birthday is March 11th. So it's like, I can't go all out for Valentine's day. Cause like, well, see, I have our birthdays and Christmas and like, are all like really conjoined, you know? Yeah. So but what I'm saying is there's like December, a, and then now we have, yeah, now we have nothing till then. Yeah. Yeah. So you have like a long time in between. Yeah. So it's worth it. But for me, if I did something big on Feb- in February, then I got to break the bank again in March. I don't want to do that. I, I have to do that. It's Valentine's day. And then our anniversary in March. So. Yeah, but I would just do something small for Valentine's Day and then spend it all on, on the no. anniversary. What did you do with what you do, Denise, for Valentine's Day? Well, I took her shopping, bought fancy shit. Really? So it was so a good choice. You guys are making me feel like I didn't do enough. What? No, you're 45 years old. You're good. I'm not 45, <laughs> asshole. I'm 43. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> the older you get, it's like, you know, it's it's different, you know? Like so you're saying the less I have to do? Oh. Nope. What you I actually, do you know, do you know what's funny? I actually had to, I had to make Denise buy the fancy shit though. Cause I still got to buy her fancy bags when I'm 45. Of course you do. Yeah. Well, so, where you so got that idea the, from. So, hey, I, was, I was hoping I could get to 35 and give it up. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, that's a life commitment there. But Melissa's name came up when we were shopping because we were going around. And I was like trying to get her an, to buy, make her buy an outfit because she wouldn't spend money on herself. And she turned around to me and said, I wish it was like Melissa where I could make like, a fifty dollar thing look like two hundred dollars, and just put whatever the fuck I wanted. <laughs> well, it's a sneaky though because she'll make like kind of like nonchalant hoboey outfits, but it's still quite. Expensive. They're still expensive shit. I can tell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like she'll still be wearing like off white pants that are like four hundred bucks. So you're lucky with Denise, Denise, because she is thrifty, and I like that. Yeah. God, no. My yeah, wife, my wife point, is not thrifty. To a point, it drives me nuts. Like we want to move house. I mean, actually, start, we've started looking for houses now. Thank God. In Texas. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. But she wouldn't look for ages because she's like, well, we have this and this. And I'm like, yeah, but. Dude, you that's... should be thankful. You should be thankful for that. It's hard yeah, having no, a, I... a, a woman that likes to spend money. But, but I've dated those girls. Like when I was in London, like that's the girl I dated. Like, yeah. Those yeah. Countless yeah. of them. Yeah. That um, sucks. But now I have to, like, but here's the thing I'm the bougie one, right? So I'm like, she said, what do you want for your birthday? I'm like, we'll go shopping for me because <laughs> I'm not leaving it up to you. <laughs> Nick, what did you do for Valentine's Day? Anything? Cheesecake Factory? Went out to dinner to a different restaurant. Where'd you take her for Valentine's Day? Is it somewhere nice? Yeah, I double date it with my brother and his wife. Is double date acceptable on Valentine's Day? 
Yeah, we were going to go out with Chris and Courtney, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you've been married for ten years. Chris and Courtney haven't. Yeah, I know, but like that's like saying like that like his brother I'm and saying, his wife are married. Him and Nick aren't, so it'd be like you know. I'm saying your Valentine's Day is not as special because you've been married for ten years. But I just said that about you being 45, and you just shit on me for it. <laughs> Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I said you still got to buy nice stuff. I didn't say we didn't. I we we didn't do anything special. Like we didn't go to dinner or any shit like that. We were gonna go to dinner and then we decided not to. And we ordered sushi here. Isn't that great though? When you're so comfortable, yeah. you're like, yeah, let's not go to dinner. Let's just. Well, because the place that we the, the restaurant that they had booked a reservation at is in was in West Palm, and like we looked at the GPS and it was like 53 minutes, and our reservation was at 8:15 p.m. So we're like, it's going to be an hour drive there and yeah. you're going to eat for two hours and then drive an hour home. It's going to be like fucking midnight, like for two hours of driving, you know? Like well, what I'm saying is some of the perks of being with somebody for fucking that long is that you could just be lazy together. The other person almost adapts your laziness. Like they're like, ah, yeah. oh, fuck it. Let's not go anywhere. Let's just order in. Yeah. Where did oh, Nick go? Again. Nick kind of fucked off again. again. He doesn't want to talk about his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've been on for a couple oh, well, hours. Here's, a, here's the thing. It's what? different. I, I'm just, just real quick. I agree with you guys. And we do that. Like if we travel somewhere and we're a uh, hotel, we'll order in. But it's actually nice because we've got the kids. We're like. Yeah. For you to go like, out. For sure. like, yeah. like the restaurant thing is super appealing because home yeah. is calm. When you have kids, yeah. I know that completely yeah. changes for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like even being around here with like the Jansons, you know, like Matt yeah. and Jordan, yeah. like they have two kids and like. You know, young kids in the four and two range are like a lot, you know? Yeah. yeah. So like for them, any opportunity to like get out and go out and like, you know, have yeah. the in-laws watch the kids or something is like, fuck, let's go, you know? Yeah, I can imagine. I yeah. can imagine. Um, listen, I'm going to, we're going to go, but you guys don't go for a second. Okay. Okay. Thanks everybody. See you next week. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.